Good evening, everybody. Uh, call this regular order, or this regular meeting to order for June, or June May the second, two thousand twenty-three. Feels like June out there. Result: the agenda for the May second, two thousand twenty-three regular meeting of council be adopted. Moved by Councilor Powell, seconded by Councilor White. All in favor? It's carried. Three resulted the minutes of the April 18, 2023 regular council meeting, the April 25, 2023 special meeting, and the April 28, 2023 special meeting be approved. Moved by Councilor Bobic, seconded by Councilor Boychuk. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. All right, good evening, everybody. Um, we have on video tonight. Uh, Mr. Poole, CFO Gadida, uh, Deputy Mayor Morio will join us maybe a little bit later. He is uh, working at the time, so he will join us a little bit later. So then we'll move on to four. We have a reception of delegations, and tonight we have with us the Swan Valley Legacy Committee. So welcome, and uh, we, we, we've been looking forward to this meeting for a little while, so pretty special, pretty exciting things that are happening right now. So you're here to kind of fill us in a little bit. Maybe council will have some questions as well. We have a little bit of time before we go into our budget meeting a little bit later on. So what I'll maybe I'll let you do is uh, open up for the discussion and uh, maybe introduce yourselves at first and then go into the discussion. So go ahead. Hey, great. My name is uh, Jesse Lacasse. Of course, I'm a health promotion coordinator with Gray Mountain Health. And I'm the president of the Swan Valley Legacy Committee. And then we have Cheryl Sauter, who's um, our secretary, and Clayton, who's on uh, a couple of the committees, so the Design and Build and MOU Committee. So in preparing for this, because <clears throat> it, it has been a little bit of a process over the last few weeks, so what I thought I would do is just give a timeline and progress to date. Okay. Uh, just to fill everybody in, because uh, not everybody's been uh, privy to all the steps. So the Swan Valley Legacy Committee was conceived on February 13th when the group of capable and motivated uh, people came together to determine how to support the town in improving our local arena. After a brief meeting, it was determined that the passionate residents and local businesses were unable to support a retrofit project due to the growing costs and rather we're interested in working together towards a new arena facility. The group determined to meet again, but under the clear goal of community involvement and a shared purpose. So given that improving recreational opportunities in the town is, is a challenge, and in uh, Valley-wide it's an even greater challenge, the group decided to form the Swan Valley Legacy Committee. And this group would act as a vehicle for community action to improve recreational activities uh, for the Valley as a whole. <coughs> the Swan Valley Arena Project is the first likely our largest and hopefully not our last project for, the, for this group. On March 23rd, the Swan Valley Legacy Co Committee elected an executive board to provide direction and supervision of the groups as well as uh, the very important partnership with the town. Our purpose was also clarified to work collaboratively on recreation product, projects benefiting the Swan Valley where the arena would be the first. In continuing to come together collaboratively and formally as a group, the committee met again on April 6th. This meeting, was, this meeting defined the working committees of the Swan Valley Legacy Committee as well as identified the chairs on the committee of the approximately 50 members in attendance. Some of the committees of significance are the MOU Committee to work with the town on a mutual uh, and beneficial and clear partnership plan a fundraising committee that will coordinate and apply for grants as well as oversee a special events, a corporate and committee that will liaise with large and small businesses as well as municipal partners on behalf of the Swan Valley Legacy Committee, and lastly a design and build committee that will work to determine uh, the best possible, possible arena that will work for our local needs as well as the operational requirements of the town and all its users. So in preparation to partner with the town on this large and exciting project, the Swan Valley Legacy Committee has applied for incorporation status. We're waiting to hear back on that um, any day. There's been extensive work done on our uh, bylaws, internal decision making and communication processes. 
We have six executive members, including a president, two vice chairs, a treasurer, and a financial advisor, as well as a secretary. And then in addition, we have six committee leads, uh, which there's two committee leads sharing one vote per committee. So for a total of nine voting members, as well as a general membership of approximately 40 additional community members, community and business members, including legal and financial advisors. Chair leads will work with their committee members on the tasks assigned under their committees, as well as report progress back to the executive group, in addition to making recommendations to the executive group for decisions requiring a motion. The executive group will meet monthly or as needed to move the project forward efficiently. Larger membership meetings will be held every quarter to ensure all members are up to date on progress and have opportunities for involvement. Regarding our partnership with the town, we have designated four reps to communicate um, on the committee's behalf with the town. We hope that the town will do the same, designate some reps to communicate with our reps so that we have clear and formal lines of communication. These uh, de designated reps will also be working with our group to ensure um, the project's meeting operational and user requirements at critical points determined and agreed upon by both groups. Lastly, we would like the town to consider a mechanism to provide pre-construction funding. While our group can apply for funding for the same, um, it, that could add months or years to the project as you need funding to get the information, to get the package, to apply for the project, it's kind of, uh, a chicken and egg with that situation. And given that the town is a mutual benefactor from this targeted and dynamic group action, it is hoped that funding can be expedited from the town's commitment to the project to get started, as uh, this funding could be required with even as soon as the next couple weeks. Um, we're talking about pre-construction, so uh, funding that's required to get the information that's needed to actually put together a formal package. And a substantial amount of work has already been done by a very dedicated and capable design and build group, uh, which is comprised of two leads and 10 members from the business local committee stakeholders. So we're really excited to work with the town on this project and uh, recognizing this might be a template for community and municipal cooperation in the future in, in lots of areas um, as, as people try to uh, work efficiently, synergize relationships and make things happen for the communities, especially in rural and remote areas. And uh, just we look forward to working together and, and uh, this being a successful partnership. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I'll just start by saying that, you know, uh, I always believe that we need to empower the people in the community, not the, you know, the elected people. And this is a good step in the right direction as far as the group, and I de definitely commend you for taking the positions that you have and, and the rest of your group and, and working with the town on this. And uh, I'm, we're definitely looking forward to it. We heard a lot of good things about it. And there's some organizational things that are still happening, but it will get there. And, and uh, I believe that uh, this can be a really good thing for the arena and whatever down the future. Mm -hmm. Any other comments from your counterparts? She said it. She said, she said it, the it best. All? Yeah. Okay. Well, then I'll let the uh, council start asking the questions. Councillor Megswood and then Councillor White. Uh, well, my first thing is I'm glad that you guys all came together because I strongly believe that a project of this nature needs to be in the hands of the community. We need to make sure we're meeting the community's needs. We're kind of up here with government, and you guys are the ones that the community needs to be involved. So thank you very much for stepping forward, and I appreciate all the work you're gonna be putting into this. Council White. Uh, two things, can we get a copy of that presentation? Can you email it to us sure. at your leisure, no rush? Uh, help me with design build versus the other one. What's the other one? Uh, I think there are two Integrated. options, There's design build and yeah, well, then I guess there's three. <laughs> okay. Well, we haven't decided exactly on which way. We're looking at a lot of different options right now. What best fits? Um, design build seemed to be the option that everybody was leaning towards. Um, a lot of projects typically are the design um, design bid build, um, but we're looking at utilizing expertise from different contractors, design-build contractors, to provide input in the design. 
We're also looking at a third option of potentially construction management type of contract. Um, and right now that's one of the things we're working on is just trying to uh, gather information, different types of proposals, getting some information together to send out for quotes for these. So the intent is to receive uh, bids on either design build or construction management. So we need to decide yet which way that's going to best suit this project. So if I interpret that appropriately, design build, you guys would design it, what you think is best for the community, what the community feeds back to you, then hypothetically you build it. There's another option where government tells you what to build? No, um, where we do all the design first would be design, bid build, similar to how the pool is done. Mm -hmm. Hire an architect, they do all the drawings, it's all 100% design, sealed drawings, you send that out to tender, a hard bid or hard spec job. What we're proposing, looking at doing, is a design build where you put an RFP together, send out the, your uh, requests for an arena in as much detail as you possibly can, but you have not sent out finalized drawings by any means. The design build contractors provide their proposals, which have preliminary drawings started, all that, that process. You select your design builder, then they go to work on actually providing finalized plans just to fit that budget that basically has been established. Construction management will be um, this the third option um, that we're looking into would be to still do an RFP but to receive construction management proposals from the construction management contractors where they would basically be working on behalf of representing the, the owners and hiring consultants and, and basically bringing that contractor on at the beginning to help us decide what it is that we want to want to build and then obtain prices for what that project would be after, if that makes sense. Like we can get into that in more detail later, but basically it has not been decided. We're just trying to weigh the pros and cons of all those types of options mm -hmm. and receive some quotes, get some information, and uh, then be able to move forward and pass on the information. Right. <clears throat> so thank you. Anyone else? Go ahead. Okay. No, I just want to also commend you on. You know, this has been. I know there's been a lot of work put into this, and the time and effort, and everybody has jobs, and everybody stays busy with everything. But um, just hearing some of the groups that have gotten together and how how great they have worked together and how. Um, this is, and I think just everybody's just said how wonderful that, you know the time and effort that you are putting into it. So congratulations. Thank you. So I did have one quick question. The seed funding or the seed money that you're indicating, do you have a rough idea of what you'd be needing? No. <laughs> because it would really depend on which which way type you of tender you go to. That. If we did design, bid, build, we would need all of the money up front to do all of the design, pay the architect, pay the structure, <coughs> all of that. Um, design, design, build, there would definitely be some seed money or pre-construction money to hire consultants to help us develop the RFP, to send out for tender to design builders so that we, we submit something professional, something that has the proper information in it so that we get design, build tenders back that are relevant to each other and for what, what we need. Uh, the construction management version, um, there would be less seed money to start up um, because you're putting out a proposal for a construction manager to, to come on with you. At some point along the line, that money has to come through, it is when. So at this point, it's, you know, we're a little unsure yet how much that would be, because it would really depend on which option we would go with to procure quotes, mm -hmm. and have which type of contract we would enter into to get the thing built. So CAO Pool, for them to come back once they have that information, what would they need to do for that step? Uh, <clears throat> I guess ask council for the money. Uh, so if it, if it is 
funding eligible under the ECSC grant, we can say that that's part of the 3.167. If it's if what they're asking for is not eligible, uh, it has to be above the 3.167 and counts on makes their decision. <clears throat> so that would be by form of letter or, or another de delegation what they want to do? Uh, well, if it's outside the, I think the, the, the grant is applied for and we can't expend any funds until that's all approved and uh, actually until the warring bylaw is done. So we've got to get going on the warring bylaw. So that may be a hold up. Uh, in, in the end, you know, the, in terms of process, that's, that's the first one. And, and then obviously we have to wait until we're approved. Otherwise, if the group needs it now, they have to ask for it. No, and council would have to know that it's outside of the, the grant over and above. Council Member. How much did we have in the reserve fund already sitting in the bank, so to speak, with regards to the retrofit project that was going to be going towards the retrofit project? Well, that that's that's there's there's a half a million that was going towards the, the retrofit out of the gas tax reserve but that half a million is also included in in the grant funding that we just applied for so that doesn't count so there's you would have to go you know there, there's one point roughly 1.2 million dollars in our gas tax reserve but those monies are slated for road repairs uh, uh a whole bunch of other uh, priority items in town if council was to go above the half a million out of the the gas tax reserve we would we would have to show you what that does <clears throat> but basically there's essentially five hundred thousand dollars accessible if need be to go towards seed funding for the project only if it's eligible for the grant so if, if, if what they if what they come at us with or the request is not eligible, it will be above the 500,000 if you intend on using that reserve. Okay. There's, there's a small amount of money in, in the rec reserve, but uh, it's nowhere near the gas tax reserve. We, we would have to pretty much cross that bridge when we get yeah, there. Yeah, no, I'm just Go wondering on. so the I'm, committee kind of has an idea. I think there was pre-construction costs like fairly significant pre-construction costs included in the grant application. Yeah, there should be. There'll be des the design, it'll be included, but we don't know, I, I can't say that everything will be included because I just don't know what you're going to buy. But, but uh, what, what they're saying is that even if you were, correct me if I'm wrong, but if we were approved for the grant, the monies can't move actually until we have our borrowing and everything else in place. Is that correct? We should. Uh, we, we really should. I'd have to look at the details because it's a grant and part of our commitment to that grant is a, is borrowing. Uh, yes, we should have that. But, but again, like, there's other ways that we can look at that, you know, but we would have to, you know, the CFO and all that would have to have those discussions and, and we would cross, you know, that at that time, so. Any further discussion? Go ahead. I was just gonna say that ineligible costs of the grant are land acquisition, leasing land, building, facility, legal costs, and financing. So, something like that would be <coughs> an eligible kind of a consulting fee yeah. or whatever would be eligible should we get approved for that grant. Right. So, that's it. And again, thank you very much. It's uh, pretty exciting to see and hear of all the unbelievable work that's done in not even 30 days uh, yeah. from basically. So it's just because the group is very, like they're capable and they're motivated. Yeah. And there's a lot of them. Well, we know there's a lot of compassion there. So yeah. And so. everybody's just like ready to go full speed. Yeah. Um, that being said, we're like, we are um, trying to get all these processes. Pieces. It just everybody's got expertise in different areas and all working furiously in their area to get as much information prepared, uh, not only for the town but for the community who's yeah. all waiting to hear what's going to happen. Yeah. So we're hoping that'll be more um, known very shortly, like right. weeks. Like really. it, take, it does take time, but 
Councilor Bobbitt, and then you have something? Okay. Uh, just to congratulate the group, I, I can't imagine how much you've done already to get to this point. Like it's, there's, that's a lot of work. I also congratulate you on the comment of this could not be the only project that you're going forward. I, I really like hearing that comment. That was really well done. Thank you. I was just going to add to the different committees that we have formed, there is a lot of knowledge, and I just want to stress that, like the design and build committee, like there is <coughs> contractors on there, there's people that have so much knowledge in the area, and I think that's fabulous that the general public might not have all of those skills, right? So that's that's a real strong point for a lot of these committees. Um, with some of the young ladies that we have working on the grants, like they've had extensive knowledge in, in applying for some of these grants already. So there is a lot of really good people that are involved in this committee, and I just want you guys to know that, that it's, it's looking really good. It's forming up really nicely. Um, another part of it is that we have had a lot of letters of support come in, and I don't know if you guys have heard about those, yeah, we but we've had um, a number of individuals and about 16 between agencies, organizations, RMs, letters of support for our committee to work together to move forward, and I think that is huge. Yeah, it is. Yeah, so it just shows a lot of support in the area, so I think it's great. And that's the, that's the difference, so that's a community. That's the power of community, because everybody can um, associate themselves with being part of a community. So whether it's just the valley, whether it's the hockey community, whether it's the recreation community. So it it, it does make it um, more uh, palatable, I guess, for, for it to be an indip independent community committee versus, let's say, the town or an RM. Or it just makes it a lot uh, easier to get involved, I think, if it's not a crazy. Um, uh, do you guys have any uh, wish list items yet? Uh, we're not. We can't even be discussing that. I don't. Okay, think that's fair. Yeah. If you can't, put a short point time. What's that? <laughs> short of money. Yeah. yeah there's a wish list. <laughs> right the um, yeah, we're hoping very, very soon. We know everybody's uh, really waiting, and like again, that group has like I don't know how many times that group has met. Three or four times. Well, yeah. pretty much weekly. Sometimes twice weekly. Right? And it's like yeah. there's ten or twelve of them, and like everybody's going as quick as possible and again tons of expertise that a, a normal person would not have access to so there's just lots coming together um, and when uh, a couple of proposals are made like you guys will be blown away it'll be worth the wait I can guarantee okay. that I can't wait yeah. um, just a few things that I told uh, or talking to Councillor Boychuk about and the, the communication, we really need to make sure that we're working together on communication to the public, just so that we're on the same track. So I'm sure that we'll do that, but definitely we need to make sure that we're communicating uh, as much as we possibly can. I was can. just thinking of that on the way here. There's a, we have a communication tool for project management that I have access to, and I think I'll <coughs> actually make a formal communication plan to put that all in place, okay. just so um, things don't get missed. Yeah. Or like, okay. um, groups or people or whoever it is, just to make sure it's like we have a very set plan. Okay, yeah. I like that. Uh, Mr. Poole, do you have anything? Uh, <clears throat> nope, no, nope. other than it's been, it's been really fast working, like we've, we've been pretty productive. Uh, I know the group knows that it's been fast getting that MOU done, but I think that's a sign from, from both entities that, uh, that we're on the right path uh, in building this community facility. It's, it's in the community's hands. And, that's no better process than a municipality can ask for, really. Absolutely. Uh, CFO Ganita. No, I haven't heard any of the details of this project, so I can't comment. Okay, thank you. Mr. Harvey? Uh, yeah, it's exciting times, and I know I've provided a little bit of information to Councillor Boychuk, and so yeah, if you have questions, then uh, Either reach out to me directly. I think I can provide a little bit to claim and we would go. But yeah, it's exciting that the community is taking it on. Okay, perfect. Any last comments, questions? None? Yourselves, anything? Uh, no, just uh, like again, just looking forward to uh, continuing taking steps. And I anticipate there's going to be a few in the next, like again, few weeks where we'll have something more. Um, visual and concrete. Okay, perfect. 
Well, again, thank you for coming out tonight. And we're looking forward to meeting and discussing this as, as we grow and see what this project will look like. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Thank, thank you again. Time. Thank the whole group, too. Thank you. We appreciate it. Enjoy the evening. Okay, so we're a little bit further ahead, so we're going to actually, we're going to come back to 4.2, and we're going to go to 5, no, sorry, 6, and that's 6.1. <clears throat> Resolve that the correspondence from the Manitoba organization for victim assistance be received. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by... Councillor Bobic, discussion. All in favor? It's carried. Result of the correspondence dated April the 14th, 2023, from the Northwest Regional Library be received. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor Boychuk. Discussion? Councillor Medwood. Uh, in their letter request, they're asking to be advanced half of their budgetary dollars. Have we received a balanced budget for the library yet for 2023? We uh, we're waiting actually to meet with them next week. This is just basically just to say that we really are receiving their request, not necessarily saying that we're going to do that. We still have to have a meeting with the board, which is going to be next Thursday. Okay. Because as you know, there's things there that need to be still ironed out completely. So, Mr. Poole. <coughs> yeah, I, do, I don't recommend passing this as we have not received a budget from 20, for 2023. But we're re just receiving the letter. That's not necessarily, we're not approving the releasing the funds, it says we're receiving the letter. Or am I, mean, I, I, or am I, I, am I reading I, that wrong? I guess I read it differently. I, I read it as a outright request to receive half of the grant funding for 2023, but we have not received a budget for 2023. That's kind of how I interpreted it okay. too. Um, Result that the correspondence dated. Do we want to clarify that we're just acknowledging the receipt of the correspondence? That's kind of how I was reading it. So, because okay. if it was if it was me and if the resolution would say, we would actually have to say we would you know release the funds you know to some you know to some tune or whatever. But we can we can choose to table this. Or we can defeat it if you want to move forward with it. Whatever council wants to do, Councilor Bobber. So is this a like a yearly thing that this letter comes every year like this, or like, or, or is it? Do we pay half the funding of the grant every they're, year? They're asking. Quarterly? They're asking for the funds now because of the financial stress that the library is in right now. I would like to see that before I approve any money. Okay. Uh, Mr. Poole. Yes, sorry, that, that's my misinterpretation as well. The, the resolution clearly states that this is correspondence and we pass the request that we've received the request. That's correct. If we pass this resolution, there's no obligation to pay that. Okay. Yeah, we're just receiving it. Yeah. yeah, that's correct. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 6.3. Resolve that the letter from the Minister of Municipal Relations dated April the 27th, 2023 regarding the 2023 <coughs> Urban Hometown Green Team Funding be received. Moved by Councillor Boychuk, seconded by Councillor Medwood. Discussion? Councillor Medwood. Uh, the letter indicates we'll be receiving $17,023. Will this cover the projected wages of <coughs> for the what we budgeted for I guess green team staffing in 2023 yeah like we budget a, a portion of the staffing wages 
because it doesn't cover all of them. But yeah, this is uh, similar to what we were expecting, I believe. Okay. Does that answer your question? Uh, yes, other than I was just going to also inquire about how many we hire under this. I know the posting went out already, but um, I can't remember how many we were. Uh, public Works gets one, and uh, I think there's a couple for a rec, but I'd have to double check a plan and get back to you on how many for rec. Okay, so about two to three people. Okay. Council White. Uh, it says we received the grant of uh, 17000 uh, Should you move the page already? Uh, are we eligible for to help cover salary costs and expenses? So what is the $17,000 for? For salaries. Pardon? For salaries. And, uh, but then it says to help your funding, your organ will be eligible for funding to help cover the salary costs, suggesting you can apply further. You don't read it that way? Like this is the letter they send out when you've been successful getting the grant. So that's letting us know where you're getting. Boy, that's a big See if we'll get Ida. Uh, the application was for seven employees with a projected wage cost of 30950 So I guess there's more rec ones than I thought. I think public works, usually there's two on the garbage truck for public works, I know. And then out at the uh, graveyard site, there's usually two there. And then I'm not sure what for recreation. Did you have something? Okay. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 7.7.1. Seven Result of the Director of Public Works report be received. Moved by Councillor Boychuk, seconded by Councillor Medwood. Discussion? Councillor Medwood? The uh, <coughs> airport update that you speak to has the chair of the airport commission been receiving similar updates uh the audit isn't complete yet but once it's complete they'll uh be informed on it okay but do they receive the same updates that we do like you usually include airport in here so is the airport commission chair and vice chair being given the same regular updates with regards to the airport as uh, our council is? I don't send them a specific uh, item list of what I'm up to with the airport, no. Um, no, as, as, the, as the airport manager, we do not give the, the members a date-to-date a -date happenings. They pass the budget and we, we go through with the operations. <laughs> That, that's about it. So they've approved the, the work that's going on out there with the card lock. They are not involved on what we just decided last week was um, what's the R value for the insulation on the shed that needs to be put in out and the location of the shed. They do not get involved. In this, let's see. Should, well, I, I guess I'm not understanding because why is our council getting regular updates but yet we are supposed to be an arm's length from the airport and the airport commission is not receiving the same regular updates and they are the ones that are actually supposed to be responsible for the upkeep and care of the airport and the decisions required to do that. The, the, the airport commission is given uh, a, a a report when they have their meetings. So I report to the board uh, on an update of everything that has been done prior. So this is just the director of public works telling you that the foreman and himself, myself, have been have been working on this. <clears throat> yeah, it's just to inform council of what I'm working on and what the foreman's working on. So if you have any questions regarding it, and the airport is a portion of work week. Well that part I understand but I'm thinking it's the airport commission that also needs to be knowing about this because if they're the ones ultimately responsible for the airport then they're going to be wanting these updates so they, if they have questions about the maintenance care and upkeep they can be on top of it versus if they only meet I don't know how often I mean the library is every two months or something according to their uh, Library Act, 
minimum. So if that's what the airport commission is on or less, then some regular updates so that they're kept in the loop because it's not the town of Swan River's airport, it's the Valley's airport. So Right. And those those members do get updates when they at their meetings, uh, in terms of their finances, the operations, the SMS system, the requirements, any any uh, issues with Transport Canada and their field inspections, the airport commission is updated uh, at their meetings. <clears throat> Okay, and was the chair or vice chair of the airport commission invited or given the option to attend the physical inspection at the airport? Uh, no, they, they hire those, the airport commission hires that work out to the town of Swan River. So we do not include the owner uh, in those inspections. They're welcome to come. There's been no interest to, to do that. Uh, they, sometimes they're they're scheduled quite quickly, but uh, uh, really there's there's no there's no requirement for the board member to be out there. They hire that work out, and we are to carry it out and follow the regulations. Were they notified of it so that they had the option to attend? Uh, no, since there's no requirement for them to be there, we do not notify that the board members be there. Uh, we are hired to to follow the laws and, and carry out with the operations. That's what we do. Councilor White. Yeah, just a compliment to the CEO Pool. I said of that with uh, Councilor Bobic. And things of import, big picture things come to us. If there's an alert or a red light, uh, Mr. Pool tells us. Uh, I th I keep thinking that's the role of the board, not to worry whether we have. Uh, I appreciate worrying and being concerned, but boy. You, you keep us up and we're encouraged to question, debate, and come if we want. We know that. Yeah, the debates have been actually quite strong on the airport commission, but uh, mm -hmm. nobody holds back. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Um, I respect that, but at the same time, you sit at the same council table that gets regular updates through the CAO and the public works. So if this same information isn't being shared to Mountain, Minnetonas, Bozeman, Swan Valley West, they're not aware of it. So yes, our council reps have a regular update and are aware, but if that communication's not getting back to the airport commission as a whole, then how do they know if, they're, if they have questions, if they're not being given the information? I guess as a response to that, you're not receiving the entire update that the Air Commission gets. You're getting 5%. You're getting what the public works portion of that work is. So this is our public works director telling council that in order to fulfill our contract, the foreman and Darren and myself have to do this work. That's a small portion of what is updated to the commission. You guys are not getting the commission's update right now. Okay, further discussion? Go ahead. I do have one more question. Uh, Director Harvey, the uh, utility committee meeting, we had asked that EM fluids be provided with the CAO contact information for our neighboring municipalities. Did you get that sent out? Yeah, I sent that email to SOG. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. <clears throat> 7.3 council reports. Uh, Councillor Bob. Oh, I'll make it as quick as possible. I guess I uh, attended the cow meeting, attended the reader meeting, and I had a watershed meeting. Probably all the reports will be pretty much the same as what I was going to say. I'll pass it on. Okay. okay. Councillor Boychuk. Yeah, we were at the same cow meeting. <laughs> Uh, participated in two interviews with uh, CAO Poole and Councilor Bobbick for the Recreation Director and helped with uh, some of the reference checks for that and reported back and had a meeting uh, all together on Saturday and uh, I believe CAO Poole is reaching out to the uh, candidate and is waiting for a response back from him. Um, also um, after the special meeting for the MOU uh, with Swan Valley Legacy Committee, met with uh, CA Poo Saturday morning and we finalized and submitted the ACFC grant application. 
And Friday night, we had a meeting uh, with uh, IB Story and the Design Build Group uh, to discuss the arena, which was pretty um, informational as well. Uh, CA Pool sat in on that. And uh, that is about it. Okay. Uh, Councilor Medwood. Hmm. Uh, well, we had the uh, um, utilities committee meeting for the lagoon. Very good information. I think the uh, presentation was shared with all council to review. It looks like the numbers are going in the right direction, so I'm very excited about uh, getting that going again for this season. I met with uh, RCMP, so there was Sergeant Hens. Um, staff, staff Sergeant Joe Duncan, the COPP, um, the Manitoba COPP program administrators. So we were discussing an outline for preliminary draft for policies, procedures, and liability agreements with regards to uh, CCTV, CCTV monitoring uh, prior to our COPP board meeting on April 29th. So we are in the drafting stages. Uh, we did bring it up to the board and there are a few things they want us to look a little deeper into and work with. Um, Staff Sergeant Joe Duncan uh, has some background in policy and procedures. So he is 100% on board with supporting us in drafting those documents and giving them a read through. And the RCMP has also offered support uh, with their sending it through their criminal operations to uh, vet our final draft. So we are a work in progress. We are trying to get stuff in place. So uh, COPP might be able to help and support with the monitoring and surveillance from the grant money we've received. Uh, there was a <coughs> Protective Services meeting with uh, Staff Sergeant Joe Duncan that I attended. Uh, he gave us a little bit of a RCMP perspective with regards to the community patrol vehicle. I met with uh, Lana from the vet clinic to review the animal control bylaw. We'll probably be meeting a couple more times to get through it. Um, working on some ideas to bring it a little more current and focus a little more on responsible pet ownership so there's a little <coughs> more ease to enforcement and requirements. Uh, chamber events committee met. Uh, diversity and validity is our theme this year. Uh, my delegation invites for the parade have been sent out so mayor if you can uh, let us know what if you'll be attending and what you'll need from us in attendance and I also wanted to ask um, I did the applications with the RCMP for the parade route is there anything I need to do because I'm new to this that needs to come to council with regards to those roads being blocked off for the parade or is that literally just done through the RCMP application the RCMP. that will all be done with that uh, <coughs> route mm -hmm. Okay, so then that's all done. Okay, I just wanted to double check to see if I had to ask permission from council or, or anything in regards to that. Is that right, Darren? Sorry, which I was just writing something down through. Mm -hmm. About the parade, like once they do the application through the town and it goes through MIT and they get the approval, like you're notified to the town roads. Like MIT yeah, de yeah. deals with the highways and then we deal with the town with the town roads, right? Yeah, yeah, we received the uh, mm -hmm. permit. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we usually, I think there's usually barriers or blockades or whatever put up to block that off. Is that from Public Works or? Yeah, we provide the barricades. Okay, so if anything, you're the one I would end up talking to on that? Okay. Yeah. They have a system in place. Okay. I was going to say, if you want, reach out to Phil Friesen because she was actually inquiring about that and I had said I knew that your committees were meeting about the parade, so I think she has some more information or feedback that you can pick her brain about anyhow well that is interesting that you bring up because uh, communities in bloom I've been trying to reach out to her I sent out an email to follow up she said that 
There would be a meeting, the committee would probably call a meeting in March or April. I never heard from them. I reached out to them late April because I asked about uh, the registration for Communities in Bloom was due April 30th and I still haven't heard back from her. Have you been? Actually, I should have added that in my report. I did meet with her um, this last week and got all the Canada Day stuff and everything is kind of in the works. So I have her number, I'll forward it to you and then you can. That would be great because, yeah. uh, yes, I'm kind of in the dark on Communities in Bloom and I'm not sure what other member to maybe reach out to, but I have not, if they've had meetings, I haven't been included in them, so uh, that's not very helpful. Mr. Harvey, you want to interject there? Yeah, sorry, just on that follow-up to the rodeo and the parade, uh, so Councillor Friesen uh, was kind of responsible for decorating the float, so if you want to take that over for her, then you can just meet me later. And we can discuss that. I think that might actually fall in Councillor Boychuk's court because she's on the committee for beautification of the town. I'm just appointed to communities in bloom. <laughs> so if it's not specifically communities in bloom, I might have to pass that because I am out of town away for a family wedding. You can't delegate. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just saying, if it's a town of Swan River, then I, I believe that falls under uh, <laughs> Councillor Boychuk's hat. If it's specifically communities in blue, then I guess I'm adding another thing to my plate. <laughs> but, uh, there will have to be some discussion about that. We'll there will be, I think. Yeah. And uh, other than that, I also attended that strategic planning session. I'm looking forward to where we get to the actual action plan and accountability planning. That's the most exciting part for me, making it happen. I love that part. Um, and I don't really have a COPP update other than the board meeting because we canceled our regular local meeting because of the crappy weather on April 20th. So okay. uh, I believe that's all I have. Thank you. And just you mentioned that you had a utility uh, committee meeting. Just a reminder that like when you do those invites, that you invite me as well to those because that usually comes to all most community meetings. Okay, fair enough. I just looked at the list and, well, actually, Councillor Boyce tried spearheaded it, but yes, I will remember that for the future. Thank you. Councillor White. <clears throat> uh, we, uh, we met uh, the 20th April with the uh, medical professional recruit retain team. Uh, we have representation from the G3 up to G4. And uh, I want to compliment uh, Reed Gade, who's taken over retaining and some wonderful ideas that we will work with in that regard. I've also been in contact with uh, the medical recruiting officer of Dauphin, who's trying to set up meetings for us in Brandon and Dauphin, where we'll go and meet the first year residents and the second year residents. Probably best to go after the first years, because most of them have not signed yet. We're supposed that the second year residents will probably have signed. I want to thank Tanya, uh, Councillor Powell, for her encouragement and her work up until now with that. That apparently you've been given other responsibilities, maybe not if you're lucky. Hmm. So thank you, Councillor Paul. The 25th, 21st, we met with uh, Staff Sergeant Duncan, and uh, as, as usual, they're continuing on. To, uh, actually, thought they were increasing some arrests, and they talked about the Safer Communities and Neighborhood Act, where individuals can by themselves, once they follow up. It's in, it was actually, those numbers were in the town on notice a while back, where we as individuals can cause things to happen. I encourage people to look at that. Safer Communities and Neighborhood Act. Then we met with the AMM executive. Uh, uh, that was, it was nice that they care about uh, our, our community. And the topics were healthcare, obviously, airport and RCMP again. And I appreciate uh, and we have executive member, Mayor Jacobson, for your work in that world too. And then on the 25th, we met with Cal, and there's three things that jumped out at me. The medical terms of reference, where the medical recruiting retained team can, in fact, uh, take things to the board, the Health, Health Foundation board, with projects, and there's a lot of those jumping up now. And Councillor Morio has been a big help in that, is identifying uh, stipends, incentives for other people. So if there's people out there think you might be eligible, feel free to ask. We can't guarantee anything, but uh, certainly willing to listen to medical professionals who need help. And there's, uh, there's, a, there's a, some money there that we could think that that would go to. And the, uh, the MOU for payments of those monies of the uh, 
CT scan is, I think, is all pretty well done up now. The, as I understand it, uh, when the CT scan arrives in Swan River, they'll give them half a million bucks. When it's running, they'll get the other half. I think I'm close there. Pretty close, if not right on. And uh, we trust government, of course, but giving them the money right now is not a priority until we see it here. And uh, MLA Wojcik says it's closer than farther, so I stay optimistic. I've written out an EMT meeting where we did that. We're planning to have a board a tabletop exercise, and the topic will be preparing for floods. And that now might be on an evening coming up sooner. It's probably better for those people who work nine to five in the, in the work world. So I, the flood topic is one, but the process on how to combat a, a disaster, which we use for whatever. And I'll get a fine for this one, but I can tell you the, the sport fish dinner is uh, this Saturday. We've got 100 tickets left at a point of interest. They have spent over $1 million in our community in the last 10, 15 years. So I don't mind uh, talking about the things they do for our community. Economic development, big time for our community. We Jack Lake and the north end over here of the Ducks, people from all over Canada will be here. It's going to be phenomenal for Muskie. So they, they bring a lot of money into our community. So I, I think it's important for us to support them, which we do. Thank you. Thank you for your public service announcement. <laughs> okay, so we attended, I attended a special meeting, um, the cow meeting, which we've all talked about. Um, we had a rectory meeting, and it was really great. Um, thank you for everybody taking their time out on a Saturday to get together for that. Um, we had a rise meeting just last night. Um, lots of great things happening there, and um, a great group of people that are really excited to move forward. Um, we had fun of attending the trade show like they have done years previous, but um, just this year we're going to just wait off, and then next year have a better plan in place. Um, they've also come up with a new website, which is in deathswanvalleyrise.com. Um, they plan to ask all municipality and the town to have vacant properties on this website. So anybody who is wanting to move to Swan River right, or area of Swan Valley it will be available. Um, the library is meeting on May 11th with the board, the RM and Swan Valley West uh, and the town of Swan River for discussion. So we'll look forward to that. Um, May just a uh, note. Notice as well, um, May 5th is a Red Dress Day. It's a National Day of Awareness for Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women and Girls. And uh, they're just like, you know. Um, and another. another event. Event. Pardon? That <laughs> Public service event. Yes, sir. But also, like a huge congratulations to Sakatoyak, and uh, we wish Chief Janai and all of his counselors a successful year ahead. Mm -hmm. Good deal. Thank you. It's that's everything? That's it. Okay, good. <clears throat> With Rise last night, yeah, that was a, uh, you know, um, there's comments uh, around the table that um, some of the counselors are feeling that it's, it's a much better working group that they have in the past. Great. And, uh, and it's very positive. We can actually sit there and have good, open conversations. And, and, and so far, it's, it's actually kind of been enjoyable to be attending awesome. these meetings. Mm -hmm. So uh, <clears throat> on the property, that was something that uh, we're working on, but uh, the town of Swan River would, you know, participate in that, and that is to provide properties and perhaps price tags on uh, on those properties. So uh, we're looking at also perhaps uh, allowing um, real estate agents in, but not right now, just maybe links to to them. But they're building, and so we're just kind of baby steps as we're moving along. But it's definitely uh, going in the right direction. And we're still waiting for the, 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 the town group or the uh, private citizen group uh, um, recommendations. So I'm hoping that that will come soon. I know we're waiting for that back in April, but uh, we're still waiting for that. But no, it's, 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 it's definitely, uh, and, and you know, we don't sit there for hours either. We, we, we sat there, I think for an hour last night, we had a really productive one hour meeting. So it was actually, pretty good. Um, AMM executive meeting, I, some of you didn't know, but I actually, when I was away, 
um, <clears throat> I joined the meeting when I was away and nobody knew that I was actually in the call. Hey, actually, some of my uh, friends at AMM didn't even know I was in the call, but I was sitting in the in the, in a room somewhere watching everything unfold. And I have to tell you, some of the members from the AMM said that Swan River was very, very well prepared, uh, asked the right questions. So I definitely thank uh, Deputy Mayor Morio for um, chairing that, and everybody did an excellent job of asking and getting those questions out. Um, and on the AMM, again, June the 22nd is the Parkland uh, District meeting, uh, spring, spring meeting, I guess, and that's where uh, we'll hear on resolutions. So resolutions have to be in by June the 1st, so if you have any thoughts on some resolutions, get them in uh, by June the 1st. Uh, also at that meeting, we'll be discussing other things moving forward for AMM, but also we'll have our June district elections. And I've been lucky enough to be nominated by the deputy mayor again, and I'll be running. And this is not a uh, online election. This is actually need to be in person at that uh, June district meeting on June the 22nd in Roblin. And also uh, mentioned by Councilor Powell, but Chief Janai was re-elected last night. Um, and I did speak to all three of the candidates and, and congratulate them on, on, on running. They had uh, a good list of candidates that ran for council and also for chief, and, and um, it was good to see. And they have a good, strong, mem uh, you know, good change as well as uh, good membership uh, serving them in their community. So looking forward to meeting up with chief, and I did ask him about the letter of or, uh, recommendation uh, mm -hmm. as well a little bit. So anyway, we'll see where that goes. But uh, yeah, things are moving along. So anyway, um, Mr. Poole, did you have anything? Uh, yeah, a couple items. Just so council knows the chamber request is in the queue. It seems when our requests pile up, the, the deadlines seem to determine what will get done next. But. Uh, uh, in regards to the rec director, we have been in contact, so a, a formal offer did go out, so we're awaiting those responses and any questions that he has. Uh, I spent a day <clears throat> with KGS on the uh, metallurgic study at the pool. Uh, they confirmed what we all knew, that there are some serious issues, uh, particularly in our mechanical room in the, in the basement section. Uh, but anyways, the uh, I think that will turn out to be successful. I, I wasn't, I'm not in the meeting obviously, so uh, I did have a gift for for Sapatoyak for their new bound up, band office. So we're going to be looking at some dates to go up there to meet uh, chief and council, especially after the election, but we can present them with, uh, with a gift for their new that office it is in the office please don't snoop because it's very delicate it, it's very breakable and fragile uh we can take a look at it when i'm back just because there, there's a process to get it out of the box that it's in but uh yeah no no question or oh, maybe there is councillor white yeah thank you for the sap gift what about uh, whiskey sip because we went to uh, a formal opening there also uh, yeah, we we're in the process of, of getting uh, just not not a, not a whole bunch, but multiple gifts uh, for certain occasions, just appropriate gifts that uh, that are in our budget range. But uh, yes, that that has been that is in the works as well. <clears throat> Have you thought about a date when we would go up there? We're going to throw. Uh, we're working on that right now. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And we're also working on a gift for the MMF new governance building as well. Uh, right. Go ahead. I have a uh, oh, sorry. sorry. No, they have another question here. I have a question. Um, the King's coronation, May 6th and 7th, is there anything municipal council is required to do in regards to that? Or? No. Just light up your uh, places with emerald green, and that's all we're required to do. I'm sorry, to do what? Light up your place, your home, businesses, offices with lights of emerald green. Why emerald right. green? It's colors of the, of the... Ireland. 
No, not Ireland. <laughs> what day is it? Uh, this Saturday and Sunday is coronation. Yeah. Well, it's the Saturday, it's the Saturday, Saturday but you can... It is the Saturday, but you can start it on Friday. That's what we're going to do at the town office. We're going to have uh, actually green and purple, green and purple lights at the, the council chamber windows, so it'll be light up during the night, and uh, that will be our celebration. What is the significance of the green and the purple? Purple's royalty. Uh, it, purple is royalty. Yes. What's the green? I, be I believe it's it's for the coronation of the king. Mm -hmm. I don't have the the document in front of okay. me, so I can't read from it. But the the, the uh, it was just issued to us last week saying to support it with these colors. Okay. What exactly? I guess you can, you can all Google it and see what it means. So go I'm ahead. I'm gonna have to. <laughs> yeah, and uh, just to echo the AMM resolutions are due June June first. Uh, I I will have one option for council regarding just to summarize because it, it's it'll be a long proposal and there's a lot of research to do but uh it's it's basically releasing municipal utility rates out of the pub mandate uh, i don't think it needs to be there i don't believe it needs to be there i think you guys are the elected officials and you get to decide and uh yeah, I just think there's a whole lot of issues with the PUB and municipalities, and, and that doesn't even there. But I will propose that to council uh, for your thoughts. Uh, and still working on the, we do have a draft property standards bylaw, so expect that in the coming days. Uh, we want to review the council indemnities and create a process of how we're going to do that, and the animal control bylaw as well, as it was requested weeks ago. Uh, I'll be setting up a meeting with the RCMP to to go over an MOU for the forfeiture grant project and the requirements there. There's a little bit of grant research that needs to be done. Uh, and then, of course, I've been spending time with uh, the CFO with PMH, getting that CT scanner agreement done on our side, and they have, they've accepted the terms on their side. We're just waiting for everyone to sign it, and that should be done. And that's all I have. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> so we can move on. Uh, question to you. Sure. Uh, just Derek, I just want to maybe get together with you uh, in a week or so and talk about the parking bylaws. If we could go over that a little bit. I have a concern over that, over the bylaws, but we could look at it in the near future. Uh, yeah. just, just speaking of the June meeting, I don't know if this would be the right avenue to go to, but I I have a concern that the rates that the people, the town of Swan River pay for their policing, I don't know how they come up with the formula, but rural municipalities on the outside do not pay for policing, which I don't have a problem with, and I don't think anybody here does. But at the same time, RCMP are paid for by the federal government. All their paychecks come from the federal government. I guess my point is that all ends up People in the rural municipality pay their income tax and pays the RCP. But we also pay income tax in the town of Swan River. And we also pay municipal tax on policing. So I want to know how their formula works that we're paying double. Tax twice. That's definitely noted. And I'll check with Dennis at the AMM. I believe uh, there is a resolution in that uh, regard already oh. there. But, there, uh, there, there is. Out. Uh, there is, and, and I'll be there on Thursday with some meetings, and I'll bring it up as well. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Go ahead. The G4 meeting on June 12th, do we know what the location is? Is it Benito, or is it across the street? Or I understand. Swan Valley West. Swan Valley West. Yeah, but in Benito, or across the street? I believe that they have talked about it's going to be at Thunder Hill. Oh, at Thunder Hill. But I don't know if that's confirmed, but I believe that's what they're working on. Okay. Yeah. But we'll I, know I'm just soon. wondering because I, I don't know the location, so I just yeah. thought I'd... They're working on that right now, but I, from what I understand, it's not fully confirmed yet. Okay. That'll be nice. I'm looking forward to it if it's the new building. Anything further? Okay. 8.1. <clears throat> Result that the Council of the Town of Swan River does hereby rescind resolution number 
0123 from the March 21st, 2023 regular meeting of council regarding a grant to the Swan Valley Crisis Center. Moved by Councilor Medwood, seconded by Councilor Boychuk. Discussion? Go ahead. All in favor? It's carried. And again, just the reason for that is because they actually turned the money back to the town of Swan River. Uh, they've received a fairly large substantial increase in their funding uh, which they from the province which was really good result of the town of Swan River donate the use of tables and chairs up to a value of nine hundred and forty five dollars to the Swan River Kinsman for the June 10 2023 lobster fest moved by Councilor Medwood seconded by Councilor Boychuk discussion so, Councilor Bob. So when you say up to nine hundred dollars, so is there is there actually a value that's put on there, or is that just a, like an estimate towards what they're using? Well, if you were renting them, that would be the value. Okay, right? so it's in there. Okay, yeah. no, thank you. Further discussion. All in favor? It's carried. Eight point three. Whereas the Urban Force Committee has benefited greatly from the dedicated service of its members, and whereas the following members have announced the retirement from the Urban Force Committee after 23 years of exceptional services Mary Snellgrove, Anna Fullerton, Pat Richenhaller, and Joy Wenstock. Therefore, be it resolved that, that Council, the, that the Council of the Swan River, hereby extend its sincere appreciation. To Mary Snellgrove, Anna Fullerton, Pat Richenhaller, and Joy Wenstop for their many years of devoted service on the Urban Forest Committee, Forestry Committee. Be it further resolved that a certificate of appreciation be presented at the next Urban Forest Committee meeting to each of these retiring members in recognition of their outstanding contributions to the community. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Medwood. Discussion, Councillor White. Yeah, a fantastic team. Uh, high energy girls, and they're still doing well, but they need a break. But uh, while we're here talking about them, I think it's important to acknowledge Francie Baird, who was one of the original crew also, and did a heck of a lot there. Phil Friesen, uh, ex councillor Friesen, who did a lot of work for years on that group. And Boris Sanchishin, a uh, past uh, councillor also, who did a bunch of work too. So. A wonderful community group doing wonderful work for our community. So thank you, thank you to all of them. Absolutely. Further discussion. All in favor? It's carried. So we'll get those put together and then we'll uh, have them ready for you, Councillor White. Thank you. Eight point four. Resolved the Council of the Town of Swan River hereby proclaim June eighteenth, two thousand and twenty-three, as the longest day of smiles and commend its thoughtful observance to all citizens of Swan River. Moved by Councillor uh, Medwood, seconded by Councillor Boychuk. Discussion, Councillor Medwood. What exactly does this mean for the town? Did you read the letter? Yes. It, it means that we proclaim June 18th, 2023 as the longest day of smiles. Uh, it's a that's pretty much all it, so all it means. It's the resolution. Like, is there any action put to it? Is there? It is. It's, it's, pro it's promoting action. It's getting people out. I believe. Uh, I believe they do have a plan. Sorry, I haven't heard this in a while. It wasn't really clear, it, in my opinion, when I read the letter. Yeah, there, there's there. something specific we as a municipal government are supposed to be doing rather than passing a resolution so that's what i'm kind of yeah they, they're 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 basically asking us to endorse it and if there's people within the community that want to go further with it then they would like to have uh, some connection with them okay that's right we're spreading the word it's a public meeting people will watch they know it's getting the word out there right okay yeah that's what i was just gonna say bring awareness to it Okay. Go ahead. So can we put something on our website to that effect? Can your eye do something up on that day and just have it on there? Sure. All in favor? Carry. So remember, on June the 18th, smile all day. No okay. frowning. No more. It's more than that. That's Father's mm -hmm. Day. Oh, look at that. 
Well, that's a good day to smile. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 8.5 result of the Swan Valley Planning District 2023 budget be accepted. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion? Councillor Bobbitt. Is this, the, I'm looking here quickly, uh, is this an increase, decrease, same price? Who's on this committee? Uh, okay, so uh, that's myself and uh, Count Deputy Mayor Morio. It should be relatively the same. The only thing that's different um, is that commitment to the uh, planning. Um, I can't remember the exact name. One second here. Uh, ta -da. To cover the, yeah, so there's like the building sustainable communities grant there that is still pending approval. So the municipalities, we, which we all agreed on, would contribute the difference to get that uh, documentation completed there. Doing, um, write down the thing. It's to do with the planning. It, it, it really needs to be updated for the oh, arm of the mountain. There, yeah, they're, the way that they're, um, designation for their plots and stuff go because um, they have a fishery in the arena so it's recreation and they need this to be done in order to have the things that they need done there so once we know if that grant comes in that that is the most of an increase that we'll see from each municipality is at 93.75 uh, but more than likely it'll be considerably less depending on which avenue or which um, consultant they use to do the documentation is that right Mr. Mr. Poole? Yeah, that's correct. It's an update of the, the Valley's development plan. That's exactly what it is. Thank you. Yeah, I remember was talking about that in G4. Okay, for the discussion, all in favor? It's carried. 8.6 result of the Swan Valley Planning District 2023 levy of $7,380.72 plus $9,375 contingent on building sustainable community grant be approved for payment once the 2022 audited financial statements have been received. Moved by Councillor Powell, seconded by Councillor Medwood. Discussion? Go ahead. Okay, just to clarify, so that $9,375 is if that grant doesn't come through? No, that'll be the most. Um, they had three quotes uh, for that uh, development plan to be, um, I guess, documented, written, um, or worked on with some different uh, groups there, consulting groups, and depending on which one we choose, there was quite a vast, like one was almost double what one other company's was. So depending on the grant, they applied for the grant as if we were going with the most expensive option and should that not be then everybody's will decrease accordingly depending on what that bill is. Okay, That's the absolute if most. They don't get the grant. Right. If they don't get the grant they won't be going through with right. it. So there's it's not contingent. enough funding. It's contingent okay. on that grant. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Mr. Poole, did you have something? Uh, it was answered. Okay. All right. For the discussion, all in favor? Carried. Okay, where are we here? 10, 10.1. Resolved that the accounts as follows be hereby approved for payment. General accounts checks number 30162 to number 30230, totaling $414,682.92 as listed on Schedule A. Payroll accounts checks number 5311 to number 5314 totaling 108,365 and 36 cents as listed on Schedule B. Direct deposits payments totaling $825 as listed on Schedule C. And direct deposit payments totaling $13,989 and 57 cents as listed on Schedule D. Moved by Councillor Medwood. Seconded by Councillor Boychuk. Discussion? 
Councillor Medwood. I have a few. Um, the explanations document, check explanations, uh, 30175 April 18th, Gargoyne North, $1,920.46. Is that literally just one month's worth of shipping costs? That was some large items. Uh, like clear tech is the chemicals, so there's a number of pallets that come in with that. Uh, Reach O <coughs> was the uh, rooms, and those are very bulky because it's for the street sweeper. And then uh, WD Industrial, I'd have to check on that. Are these all things basically coming out of Winnipeg? Uh, usually out of Winnipeg, but it just depends where the suppliers are. Have we done some price checking with Westman Courier? Because they also do Winnipeg to Swan River. Yeah, some stuff comes up with Westman Courier too. Because I, I know um, shipping prices have gone up, but we do actually have other options. So have, if we haven't price checked recently, if we can maybe uh, look to that for, for future ones, because that's kind of pricey. Uh, 30180, is it Lindy Canada Inc? Town Shop Cylinder Lease Renewal? Uh, yeah, so that's for uh, welding, the tanks for welding. Okay. And how often does the lease, is that an annual thing? Or? Yeah. yeah. Okay. On the credit card, 30195, we have charges for petroleum card luck. It's the gas bar and the grocery that I'm interested in. I'd have to check what those are. For $805.80 and $517.64. Now with the gas bar, they uh, get propane there. Uh, okay. So that's probably propane. I'd have to check what the grocery was. Okay, thank you. Uh, the 30218 Lana Graham $300 prize money for volleyball tournament. I believe Lana had to purchase uh, something as a prize for the, for the tournament. I, I have to follow up with that one as well. 30218. Mr. Gadeta. Again, that was a program that was conducted by Swan Valley District Recreation Commission in the past in the town. Yeah, we just taken that on, and so the, they've always given out cash money as prizes for the big tournament at the end of the volleyball season. And in, in the past, it was the, the District Recreation Commission that, that handed out the money. Now it's the town that hands out the money. It's the adult rec league, I believe, right? For volleyball. Yeah. Okay, thank you. you. Come in. Um, 30219, John Deere Financial, 18559. Uh, is this repair work or? That'll be the mowers. Yeah. So maintenance and service? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, 30224, it's a numbered company, 14,384 Snap-on Tools Pro Link Edge Master Kit Code Reader. Is that the one? That's that the email. The explanation the other day. Yeah. And what exactly does that do for heavy equipment? Is uh, so when they have codes, then you can plug it into that and it'll say what the code is. Oh, for what's wrong with it, it yeah. kind of thing? Okay. I thought it was that, and then I was like, well, now's a good time to ask what that's all about. Uh, Manitoba Hydro, $1,096.20 for safety watch at 317 Swan River Drive. So we were doing a utility dig, and it was in close proximity to Manitoba Hydro's infrastructure. So when we're digging that close, they mandate that they have a safety watch. Mm -hmm. As in they have somebody on site? Yeah. Okay. Just in case you accidentally, like if you get close to the wire, then the guy says, whoa, or if you accidentally hit the wire, then they're there to 
do what, do what they to need done. to do. Yeah. Okay, good to know. Um, okay, there was also there was also a couple others. Give me one second to pull them up. Uh, the direct deposit payments, April twenty seventh, Pitney Works, two thousand one hundred and thirty postage meter refill. How often do we make this payment, and what exactly is the refill for? Mr. Ganina? Uh, we have a postage machine that, that uh, prints the amount of postage on the envelopes instead of spending a whole bunch of time licking stamps. And so uh, it needs to be refilled with, with the money to uh, put the postage on. So this is actually the money to go specifically towards the payment of stamps and postage? Right. Yeah, yeah, the, the, you load the meter with digital money to print the stamp, the postage on the envelopes. And how long does the $2,130 last us? Depends on how, what we're mailing with the clerks just mailed out a whole bunch of water bills and a whole bunch of accounts receivable statements. So on average, are we talking one month, three months, six months? During, during tax season, that doesn't last very long at all. We can use that up, no problem. We send out water bills four times a year to everybody. It fluctuates. There is, I don't know, what's, what's, the, what's the annual budget on that, Terry? Would you be able to state that? In 2022, we spent uh, just over $14,000 on postage. Okay. Thank you. Anything further? Go ahead. Uh, 301 nine, six, uh, seven hundred. $97.42 for a wet and dry back. Is that what we paid for a wet and dry vacuum cleaner? Or am I mistaken here? It's a, it looks like it's a few things, so we'd have to pull up the invoice okay. to see okay. the amount. Yep, yeah, that'd be fine, thanks. Anything further? All in favor? It's carried. <clears throat> 10.2. Resolve the financial statements for the three months ending March 31st, 2023, be adopted as received. Moved by Councillor Boychuk, seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion? Go ahead. I actually have quite a few, and I'm just looking down at the time for the start of our... Yeah, eight minutes. Eight minutes, so um, do you want me to start now? or You just can. Wait? We can always come back to it again. Okay. Because let me pull that document open. Uh, I believe my first question is on page four. We have a line under other revenue for cable television fees. What is that pertaining to? The direction local cable television company pays a percentage of the revenues that they make in this community in the form of taxes and like the, they, they also pay property taxes for their building but they pay a, a property tax that's a, not based on assessment but based on a percentage of how much money they make in the community and that that's all determined by assessment services so they they, they tell us what the uh, total fees will be for each year. Thank you. Um, the miscellaneous revenue were at 63.3%, but what is considered a miscellaneous revenue? Where is that coming from? It's mostly supplier rebates, like we got a several thousand dollar rebate from the AMM trading company 
and we get a rebate on the Blue Cross uh, premiums. Okay, thank also, you. I always get some patronage uh, from various suppliers as well, but it's mostly AMM and Blue Cross rebates. Okay, and on the same page, the transfers from reserves, it's budgeted for $20,716. What reserves are we talking about? Uh, so it's a piece of uh, machinery that uh, was council decided to make the annual loan debenture payment from the machinery replacement reserve. So that gets transferred from the reserve into, what am I looking at right now, the general operating fund? Correct. Okay. And then the payment is made from there. Uh, on page five, under protective services, emergency measures, uh, we're already at 40.4%. Is that normal for this time of year? Uh, we have a new uh, safety officer that uh, allocates his time between the various things that he does, the workplace safety, airport stuff, and emergency measures. And so the, being new, we didn't know how much of his time would be spent on each of those tasks, so it was a rough estimate. In addition, in addition to that, uh, we, we've gone, it's good to get new eyes on things. So Matt is, is really going from grassroots, looking at absolutely everything, uh, everything. So he's, he's really starting from scratch. So there's, he's done a lot of work to it. We're going to get the tabletop exercise. Uh, but that's funny. This question was asked. He was told about that, but not told about it, but he was asked about that budget and made sure he kept an eye on it uh, for the remainder of the year. Okay. But yes, it was a rough estimate because there's a lot of work to do. I can totally respect that, but if we've eaten up 40.4% of that budget already and we're only one quarter into the year, um, <clears throat> What's going to happen if we hit 100% before the end of the year? Then like, we will do our tabletop exercise, but there, there's no further tabletop exercises planned. He's not going to restart and redo what he's done from January to March. Uh, when that budget runs out, we, we, have to, we have no choice but to stop or to ask council for more money. In the case an emergency happens, there will be accounted for expenditures whether we like it or not. Is this the first year with our EMO or whatever Matt's position is? No, the, the municipality is required to have an EMO officer. Uh, we've had everything from shared between the, the municipalities, uh, which did not work well. Uh, and then we, we've incorporated that into our previous safety officer's position. And that is now currently how we operate it. Was, was your question, is this the first time we had him, this person? Uh, well, I oh. guess somebody filling that oh, role. Yes, okay, so that answers that. Yeah, because yeah. <clears throat> I'm just wondering if we have something to refer back to because I am a little bit concerned that we're 40% in to that budget with only a quarter of the year expended. So um, we're going to go, because we're only about two minutes, so we're just going to take a break from this and then sure. we'll get ready to go into uh, <clears throat> the, um, the hearing. <clears throat> so we'll get everybody to get ready and set up for that. Aaron, have you made me a co-host? 
Uh, yeah, I believe I did that right at the start. Thanks. Yeah. Okay, so it's 7.30 and I'll uh, open the public hearing for the 2023 financial plan. <clears throat> uh, the purpose of the hearing is to provide an overview of the 2023 financial plan and to allow any interested person to make representation ask questions or register an objection regarding the 2023 financial plan. I do request that any persons making representation to the hearing state his or her name and civic address. Um, so with that, we're going to go with Mr. Poole first with the presentation and then, um, then we'll take questions or, or objections afterwards. Just a point, a point of order. Can we can we pass the resolution four point two suspending the open meeting? Oh, very good. I missed that. Thank you. Um, resolved that this regular meeting of council be suspended. Be it further resolved that this uh, council op uh, open the public hearing for the two thousand and twenty three financial plan. Moved by Councillor Midwood, seconded by Councillor Boychuk. Discussion. All in favor. It's Carrie. Yeah, thank you for doing that. So anyway, uh, back where we were, um, you got your presentation there, do and then I think I don't know if there's any comments from Mr. Gnita afterwards. Which, how do you guys want to manage this? Uh, yeah, I will do the the public presentation, and if there's questions during, uh, anyone can speak up. Uh, that is how. Do this. I'll just start sharing my screen here. So, so we do have one person here with us tonight, uh, uh, Mr. Reed Minish. So, uh, Mr. Minish, if you do have anything, we can stop and ask questions, or you can wait to the end. You want me to come to the table? Yeah, you probably should. When when that time comes, you know, because you will want to see the video uh, in front of you there. Go ahead. And just sharing my screen here. Everybody can see that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can you see it on that side? Okay. Good. Okay. So starting right in, and just so everyone knows the the presentation isn't a, there's no storyline. The information is on the slides. So I'll be, uh, I'll be basically relaying the information on the slides, but I can speak to any, uh, any questions or, or any concerns that are brought up myself or CFO Benita. Uh, so this is our annual budget schedule. Uh, obviously the election Threw a wrench into it this year, but we are proposing to to start in the early fall uh, to be to have a final budget done by January. The same deadlines for the financial plan to be passed uh, by May fifteenth stand, but uh, we can be done a lot a lot sooner. The advantages of that are obviously the managers being able to start their projects on time without getting council resolutions. Uh, if we decide that we are going to do those projects, uh, they can go through with full confidence, knowing that they are going to move forward, not that we are going to debate them out and then May, June comes and they can't get started anyways. They will not finish in that year. Our budget priorities are maintaining our current levels of service, uh, maintaining uh, any, any additional or self-sustaining infrastructure, uh, these will stay until we have a, you know, a good strategic plan with some actions. Maybe that's one thing that will alter these, but this is the a real foundation of of our budget priorities. Thank you. So going on to revenue, our total tax revenue, five million, just under uh, five point four million dollars. Our other revenue. Uh, that we make $2.935 million, 20,000 in transfers from reserves, 
So our total revenue for the town of Swan River is eight million three hundred and fifty five thousand dollars. Councilor what, what? Um can we either shift the side panel view and or minimize it just so that we can see the it's kind of overlaying some of the numbers no. on the left. So is that the zoom you mean? Yeah, we fixed uh, it. It's good. It's good. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Okay. Good. So education tax, uh, we are responsible for collecting uh, or adding the education mill rate onto ours, onto uh, the municipal mill rate. Uh, currently, the, the province is in the process of phasing out. Uh, phasing out the education tax, and they're doing that very slowly, but this shows the portion of the mill rate that is, that is broken down between municipal mill rate and the education rate. So going into our property value versus tax relationship, uh, from last year we had a 1.16% uh, growth in our property values. Uh, right now, our breakdown in value is 63.5 residential, 36.2 commercial, and 0 0.3 agricultural. That was added when we annexed uh, uh, the Reach property. And then the portioning system, which we base our, our property tax on, is split between 45% uh, residential, 65% commercial, and 26% agricultural. <clears throat> So moving on to the towns, uh, so this is not uh, education, this is the municipal tax rate. Uh, this is a graph just showing the past so uh, council can see where we're going. I think it's important to note that that uh, a report presented by our CFO uh, in order for the town to get to recover financially, the tax increase will be needed every year uh, for the foreseeable future. That's why our reserves stay up. Uh, expenses are going up, wages go up, everything goes up. So unless without a considerable service decrease, uh, you know, the, the, the administration will not recommend reducing our revenues, therefore the tax increase must go up. So just a slide to compare uh the cost of taxes on a market value house of 140,000 uh doing the assessed value calculations your monthly property taxes are are uh, comparable to some of these some some of these items not comparable to some others but just to get to have a, a comparison not too bad considering the services we provide Uh, moving to revenue, so just to detail uh, other revenue in all of our departments, environmental health, 942, a large portion of that is due to the scale, uh, recreation and cultural services, quarter million dollars, rentals and facility usage, 150,000, uh, protective services, just over 100,000, transportation, just under 40,000 in public health and welfare, 43,000. <clears throat> so that is all in our sale of service within our departments. The grants that we receive, uh, that the town receives is an unconditional municipal grant from the, from the province, uh, 524,000. They just recently increased that. So a thank you to them. And then the federal gas tax uh, monies we receive, 225,000. Then the conditional grants would be one, the, the applied for grants uh, based on requirements, $465,000. So the, the arena project is not included in there right now. Moving on to our expenses. So there's a full list and bar graph of the where the town's money is being spent in operating and our fiscal. 
So this is, you know, operating is where, you know, the monies we spend providing our services. Uh, fiscal represents the debt payments and the transfers to reserves. And they will equal our, our revenue amount, $8.355 million. So going into each department, protective services, <clears throat> uh, the, the very small amounts, uh, we are required to, to perform some of these services like EMO, uh, having a safety program. Uh, we, we obviously <coughs> exceed, we exceed the minimum requirements. Uh, we've decided as an organization to, to implement minimum standards. So, uh, all of that comes at a cost. And then obviously the RCMP contribution, which is by far the largest in protective services and the entire town. So just to show or give counsel uh, a representative of the last few years on RCMP, they've, they've increased substantially. Uh, they're estimating a decrease for 23, but uh, with some of the decisions the federal government are making, I don't know where that's going to end up. Uh, in 2024, I should say. I have a question. Oh, Mr. Poole, um, uh, Mr. Minish has a question. Just state your... Uh, Green Minish, number nine, Riverview Drive. Thank you. Go ahead. Uh, with regard to his presentation on the RCMP, my understanding in the news was that the RCMP is going to back charge municipalities for some costs. Is that correct? It is. Is that reflected in here? It's, I don't, is the retro in, included with that? Yes, the retro is included, but the body worn cameras is not. There's more cost to come then. Yes. The AMM is still fighting that, and so was the municipalities, but you know where that might go. Yep. Yeah, yeah the, the AMM has successfully fought to, uh, to extend the deadline to, for us to make a decision on how we're going to pay. We're, we're going to take advantage of that and, uh, and wait the two years, so we have an additional two years. I see it as, as time to, to fight this decision uh, before we actually hand over the money, which will be very tough to get back, in my opinion, but uh, we will most likely be taking advantage of that. We have another question. Piggybacking off of that question, uh, am I correct in understanding that some of the money for that uh, retroactive pay raise has already been saved into the municipal accounts? Yes. And is that the full, the full amount needed is already saved or do you need to uh, raise Mr. more? Mr. Ganita, we, we did uh, have money set aside last year for that. Was the actual full amount? I can't remember. Uh, the government has been providing estimates of what they think that the retroactive pay will be, and so we uh, expended uh, the, the latest estimate at the time. So we still don't have a final number of what what the retroactive pay will be. It's been the only estimate so far. And, and what was that amount of money that we did uh, put away? 235000 Okay, thank you. Okay, carry on. Okay, uh, moving on to, to recreation. Obviously, the pool takes its fair share, uh, just under $650,000. Uh, that Keep in mind, that's with the changes in operation. We've been able to drop that from, I guess, pre-COVID numbers of 800000 a year. So that, it's, uh, that has been working well. Uh, when the town decides when that facility is open. We have been dealing with some complaints on that, but they were expected. Uh, the skating rink and arena, 473000 The community center, the veterans hall, 112000 Parks and playgrounds, 100000 uh, The library, 98000 uh, Rec programming, which we separate out, 58000 And miscellaneous. 16,000 for a total of one point, just over $1.5 million. So just for everybody, 
That's the netted costs. Uh, no, those are those are full expenses. Uh, those are not netted. Okay. So going on to environmental health, this is the waste collection, so your residential and commercial garbage collection, uh, your landfill cost, which is a contracted out, and the recycling collection and disposal, or shouldn't say disposal, for lack of a better term, use. Uh, and wherever it goes, the, the, the logistics of them to, to haul it to a recycle facility, just under a half a million dollars. That is a, administration is very aware that that is not sustainable. Uh, we have to, we have to look at uh, options sooner than later to change uh, that number. And we did speak about that in, in I think another public meeting, and uh, with regards to that, that the contract with OSS is coming to an end this year and that council is going to have to seriously look at that. I have a question on that. Okay. That number there for the recycling, does that include the fees that are charged to businesses who pay for that separately? Did you did you hear that? Yeah, I did. The, that is the entire recycling cost, yes. So the fees that the business people pay, pay is in that 498000 This is just the expense. No, this 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 is just the expense from the town. The 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 fees for the dumpsters are are uh, I guess it's it's the expense for us to to be the middle person to to charge those fees. But we do we do accept the revenues so it, and and pass them. But uh, it's it's just on paper. So 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 I think that what he's saying is that that recycling. That number there is just what our portion of the cost of recycling. It does not include what businesses are, are paying uh, to us, which they're fil you're basically paying the bill through us. No, the, this, this should be the full expenses of the businesses as well. We, right now we are involved and we, that's one of the other questions that we've had of, of why we're, we're the middle person. So this is the full expense all recycling in the town of Swanover, commercial and residential, and we do collect revenues to offset these costs. Okay. And what portion is the revenue? Uh, Terry, do you have that number right quick? Were you wondering what the business revenue was, like what the business is paying? Is well, that the question? I, or? I don't pay for my residential, but the business pays for it separately, so it's all incorporated in the, in the residential Assessment, correct? You, you, but, but yes. the business has come out of it if they don't want to use it. That's true. That's my question, actually. Okay. Did you hear that? Uh, just confirming that the businesses have the option to opt out of the program. Uh, the residents do not. But what is what is what the business? Uh, do you want to know what the business? Uh, yeah. What's the portion of that is collected from business? Okay. What's the portion that the business? Okay, Terry, can you can you answer that? I would have to open up our yeah. or stop sharing in order to find that. In uh, 2022, we collected $229,000 from businesses. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Yeah, uh, one last question regarding yeah. the landfill. There's a fee charge for the landfill to take going across the scale. Right, tipping. Is fees. that a net number of those, those fees? Did you hear that? That's the cost uh, to operate the landfill. That's not Under the net. So the cost it's not and the work that we do out there. And then there's uh, the revenue isn't included in that. It's not included? No. The revenue is, goes is that down. yours or theirs? The revenue? Uh, the revenue? Like the revenue comes in to offset the cost of landfill. Okay, so that is a number there. Well, this is the expense. Like the revenue hasn't been subtracted from this number. My question is, when I pay for 20 bucks for to drop some refuge on, does that get deducted from this or is that a separate number? Yeah, the revenues will be a separate number. Yeah, like that would be a revenue line item. Okay, that's the question. Thank you. Okay.
Right, and we have we do have a goal for for in the environmental health services uh, well, portions of it to be self-sustaining. We're not we're not there yet, so our revenues do not cover near our expenses, but uh, we would like to get there. Moving on to transportation services. <clears throat> so your road maintenance, that is your street sweeping, pothole patching, uh, curb and gutter repair, uh, road reconstruction, obviously, just the larger uh, pavement patches, traffic services uh, is your signage, delineators, uh, everything else pretty self-explanatory. Uh, comes to a total expense of $965,000, but a good swath of, uh, for council so they can see what we spend on each. I don't know, Darren, if you wanted to touch on the, the snow and ice removal budget. Yeah, so that has been increased uh, just the last two years. We've had substantial snowfalls, and then also uh, with the Main Street snow clearing agreement to provide uh, quicker snow removal for the businesses on Main Street, so that number has been increased to reflect some of those changes. Okay. Uh, Councillor Bobak. And what might, what might that number be for Main Street? Uh, it, it changes year to year, um, so we get 13,000, we can end up spending 40,000 or more. I'll, I can update you with what we spent this year. Uh, also have to compile the invoices. And then that's where we have been lobbying to MI to pay the bill because it, if they were doing it, it would cost them the same. So why wouldn't the province be paying us for uh, the true cost mm -hmm. directly? So that's something that's up to us to keep lobbying to the, the government, to the minister on on that. Go ahead. Well, we need to quit entering into the agreement and paying them. By saying that we're going to pay them, we've entered into that agreement. They don't have to do nothing. So we need to quit voting for the agreement. So we did that this year. We voted to accept their $13,000. So. How long did it take them to service our main street before when they were looking at yeah, that contract? Quite a while. Quite a while. We have uh, Deputy Mayor Morio uh, joining us in the call. Um, the question was asked is how long did it take when MI did it in the past? And that's where we got a lot of the complaints because they would push it to the curb and leave it for long periods of time where people were crawling over top mm -hmm. of snow banks and so forth. Some businesses were removing their own snow and all that. That's why we went into where we went with this. <coughs> But I really believe that we need to keep pushing. I know the AMM has, we've spoke with the, uh, the minister on this as well, but it's a, it's a process obviously, so, but. Yeah, that, that's, that's basically what I was gonna touch on. It, it came down to service. Like it, it was a complete opposite spectrum when we didn't have the agreement because we wanted them, we wanted them to provide the services the town's providing right now, but they, they simply will not. They, they will not. It, in some winters, we had it twice per year and with large, heavy snowfalls. And like the, uh, Mayor Jacobson said, the, the sidewalks were covered. People were falling over windrows and council seen it at that time as completely unacceptable. So therefore, we, we made the decision to get what we could get at the time, and we are in control of the service that's provided on Main Street. That that was the kicker, is that we could decide to do it or not, and uh, and then we would obviously fight for more funds. So Councillor uh, Boychuk and then Councillor Medwood. So how many years have we been in a contract? Uh, I think this will be the third year. So would we be able to run those numbers, what we were paid, what the expenses were for year one, two, and three, and then prior to negotiating in this contract say, this is where we're at, this is what we've been left with, you need to come to the table with that. Like I think that's a reasonable ask and you've got the data there to support that. Is there, like what am I, they just say no, we'll just do it. 
what, what, ch what changes is the amount of snowfall. So with those averages, it's tough to use yearly expenses as averages when it comes to snow removal. The, it just changes and we have a massive storm. And, you know, maybe the wind blew in a lot of snow and using, you know, we can look back at records or precipitation levels, uh, but sometimes they're just not accurate. But uh, it gets tough when we start dealing with averages and snow removal. Yeah, they, they, they have to change the way they do their calculation. Go ahead. Um, I have a couple comments. Uh, one thing that I've said before at the table, and I'm going to say it again, with other municipalities who aren't accepting the agreements, they are sending invoices when they do go out and clear their roads and they are getting reimbursed for the amount. So they are invoicing, they're not accepting this agreement. If and when Manitoba Highways does not get there in an efficient or timely manner, they go out and clear it, and then they send the invoice for that work to Manitoba Highways, and they're invoicing them and getting refunded. So again, something we can look at doing as well if we're not accepting that agreement. And the other one is, is this a resolution for the AMM district meeting? And if it hasn't been created, can we create one to take to the AMM district meeting so it can be brought forward as a lobby yeah. effort? Go ahead. With this uh, agreement with the Manitoba Highways, I know this might be a little bit difficult to calculate, but are they arguably saving money from what they would spend otherwise if they actually provided their level of service? Absolutely. Okay, Mr. Poole. Uh, Mr. Again, they called them on safety violation for what they're doing on Main Street, as you say, piled up against the curb. People can't safely get out of their vehicles. Absolutely. They, they want to go to a safety violation publicly. We, we, we absolutely brought that up at the time when they were doing it, and uh, what the answer that we got back year after year was they have written down level of service. So they have an obligation that uh, if the snow is not piled up, or if it's piled up less than three meters, ooh, not three meters, feet. three feet, or 3.5 <laughs> feet. That's a long <laughs> we, we don't want to see that. <laughs> It's, it's not three feet, I think it's just over three feet, but there is a number. Uh, they, they are not required to remove it. So they let, they, that's, the, that's the paragraph that they fight. Okay. Um, Deputy Mayor Morio, um, I can't, we, we can't see you or, or Mr. Ganita, so if you do have a question, uh, you may, it might pop up on the screen, I don't know, but uh, you might have to also just interject too, so just so that you know. Okay, no problem. My video is on, so okay. hopefully it'll show up sometime. Well, no, we just have our screen on with the presentation, so we, we don't have Oh, right, to... yes. Yeah. Okay, carry on. Okay, I'm going to move on from transportation services. So Sorry. here we have my... Just sec, Sorry? Just sec, Derek, I was just... I heard uh, Councilor Mario coming in, so I... Uh, Brought the invite list, but you had already in, or allowed them in, so uh, I just had to minimize that. We're good okay, now. we're good now. Okay, I'm gonna move on. Uh, for the 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 other muni municipal expenditure under general government, uh, our administrative costs seven hundred forty thousand, uh, legislative costs one hundred forty thousand. Uh, other fifty thousand, which I will have, and recoveries uh, eighty eight thousand. So that that comes out of the general administrative. We 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 charge ourselves our time to work, and that comes back as uh, labor recovery. <clears throat> And moving on, again, the highlighted, just to explain the miscellaneous, uh, the allowance for tax assets, uh, reserve, 140,000, public health and welfare services, 192,000. Uh, 
that is really comprised of the cemetery, general maintenance, open and closing, administration, sales, uh, and managing the cemetery, uh, regional planning and development, 52,000, resource conservation and industrial development, 82,000. Any questions on those? Doesn't appear to be. Okay. So as stated uh, under public health and welfare services, uh, cemetery, doctor recruitment, and our social assistance program, which that number hasn't changed since I started. <clears throat> Councilor Bond. Region. Where does that go, the social assistance? Uh, uh, to the province. That's it's paid to the province for providing that service, welfare service. Uh, go ahead. I, I noticed in your budget that the uh, there's a there's a line item for other cemetery perpetual care fund, and the amount for that has been uh, nearly cut in half from last year's contribution, and I'm wondering. What the story is behind that? What what that uh, what that fund is for? Yeah, that would be directly related to the amount of sales that we have. So the perpetual care fund is a percentage of money that we put away uh, with the amount of sales that we have, and if we're expecting a reduced amount of sales, we we lower that number. Okay. Does that make sense? I think so. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Carry on. Okay, so regional planning and development, uh, our planning and zoning uh, services, basically our planning officer, uh, beautification and land rehabilitation, urban weed control, so that's grass cutting on, on town areas, uh, Christmas lights decorations, 10,000, and communities of blue, 6,900. For a total of fifty-two thousand nine hundred and fifty. Moving on, resource conservation and industrial development. So forty thousand dollars for our incentive plan. Uh, that's for for any new builds on residential, commercial, or industrial uh, developments. Tourism eleven thousand dollars, which is comprised of the the chamber grant, parkland tourism, valley in the mountains and miscellaneous advertising and town labor costs. Water conservation grant and uh, veterinary services, $8,000. For a total of $82,000. Okay. Moving on, so our debt payments uh, equals $666,000, that's to pay for uh, finished projects that we borrowed for. Uh, transfers to capital this year, $97,000 for a total budget of $763,000. And then a separate uh, transfer to reserve, $622,000. So all transfers to reserves, including the landfill, tax stabilization, uh, everything, $622,000. Um, Mr. Minish. Yeah, but you have a debt ceiling that you're, you can't go over for your, by a law right. based on assessments, is that correct? That's true. How close That's correct. You, how close are you to the ceiling and how far away from the ceiling, or whatever you want to turn this? Mr. Ganeda? Uh, we're limited uh, uh, currently to a little over $16 million for borrowing, and we're a little under eight million at this point. Okay. Anything further? Okay. Good. Thank you. Okay. Moving on into the utility services, we service sixteen hundred and twenty-five uh, connections. We don't have a rate increase plan for twenty twenty-three. Administration costs, so that's the, the foreman, the director of public works, and a small amount of the CAO, uh, 99000 Our water service expense, uh, which gets uh, from the supply wells, 
the treatment uh, into the distribution system, uh, 595,000, the sewer service, which is the collection system, the access manholes, uh, lift stations to the treatment cells in the lagoon, 236,000, and other expenses, uh, debts and transfers, 413,000. So just a breakdown of those, uh, our utility debenture debt payments are 264,000 uh, this year, uh, a contribution to the water and sewer reserve of 98,000, and uh, lagoon specific reserve $50,000, totaling 1.344 million. So going into capital projects, I, these are the highlighted big ones. I have another, I, I added a, another PDF, or sorry, CFO Ganita added another PDF to the agenda, which has a full detail of our entire capital plan. Uh, we are planning on 4.147 million in capital improvements. Uh, like I say, the highlights, the the consultant for the arena retrofit must be paid. Pumper one replacement, 900K. Water treatment plant, uh, generator and electrical upgrades. PLC upgrade, that's gonna be finished off in 23. Athmo drainage and the column bearing cost. Councilor White. Did we get quotes on the construction of that column barium? Yes, Darren, or Darren, go ahead, sorry. Director Harvey. Yeah, that was a preliminary, so it'll be a resolution before we purchase, but it should be quite a bit lower than that. Thank when you. We come for the actual purchase, but before I purchase, there'll be a resolution and a, um, a detailed sheet where we'll get to see the cost. So yeah, it should be substantially less than that. Seems a little high. Okay, for the discussion, Councillor Baldwin. Yeah, we spoke on this before that that 250K was. For a large unit, I guess we call it, and we're looking at maybe smaller as they're bought, maybe move more on there. So that 250k was the first. So we kind of come to the conclusion, I do believe that, and I don't know how many units you get for 250k, but this will be, I'm going to say yeah. half the size, so half the money, but when those fill, that money will pay for the next one. So. Can you guys hear that okay? Barely. Oh, sorry. I just said. I heard enough, Don. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> Go but you're selling those things anyway. That's right. Yeah. It's yeah. eventually going to pay for itself. That's right. That's right. So, Director Harvey, did did we go with a smaller one, like similar to what we have, or did we price out that larger unit? It's got to be finalized, but oh, okay. there'll be a decision paper uh, with all that information for council prior to approval, and uh, with the cost. Like this would be a max cost, but it'll be substantially lower, and uh, council will have final say on the purchasing resolution with the decision paper and all that information. But there's more work to be done on that one. There was other items that were uh, that we dealt with first. Okay, carry on. Okay, and. The debt sheet, so the, the new debt obligations projected in 2023 are bumper one replacement, 900,000, the columbarium, the, the estimated 250, but will be under, and the 100 block of Centennial Drive yeah, utility renewal. So I have to ask, is it all right if I go to the, or do you want me to stick to the presentation? What were you thinking? I do, we do have a full list of our of our capital list. Well, I think since we're on capital, let's go to that and then we can come back. So as you can see, the estimated cost of these projects, uh, a lot of them are covered by grants. A lot of them are dependent on grants. Uh, anything borne by general goes on taxes. And uh, obviously the ones under borrowing are the ones that we are asking to borrow money for.
Anything on that? Questions, Councillor Medward? Just out of curiosity, but that um, Althone, Athlone, Ath, well, yeah, whatever you pronounce it as, uh, that drainage one is that linked with Ditch Road and? Yeah, it's the fallout, if you want to call it, the drain to the river on our property. Okay, and is that supposed to be in collaboration with Manitoba getting? 275 Ditch Road improved? Poss possibly, but that's still. There is a component of it. Uh, so they're doing a study. The RM has asked for the province to do a study because the province is saying that there's an old drainage outside of town uh, that's currently filled in and farmed. And they're saying that if that drainage was ditched out again, then there won't be any issues with Ditch Road. And the RM wants to have the existing uh, ditch wind out a little bit so that it can handle the flow. Because uh, MTI has told them they won't resurface Ditch Road until the drainage has been taken care of. But then they're arguing over what is the best way to take care of it. So. That study is still ongoing, and then once it's completed, there'll be a little more direction. So this, this one is not a guaranteed one. This kind of depends on a few things as to whether we proceed with it. And, and speaking of the all the the option of the other the old drainage, I think that that's boat has sailed and gone. I think from what I heard from from the department. But is this study, Mr. Poole? I thought the study was like should have been done by now. It's definitely done by now. So we don't, we know that MIT has it. We just haven't seen it. Swan Valley West hasn't seen it. Uh, I guess I, I shouldn't say I guarantee that it's done, but the engineer Dawson told me it's done, but he, you know, he won't provide it to me. But uh, in, ter in terms of that, that's really, uh, I seen that as a, a project or a relationship builder with the Swan Valley West. That's something to show that we can work together uh, in order to get 275 done. Councillor Bobbick and then Councillor Medwood. I guess my, that's what my point was, that really that project does no benefit to the town of Swan River. Yes. Other than to improve 275. Yeah. 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 Go ahead. Um. Well, yes and no, because apparently if we own part of that land and fiasco involved with drainage at 275, then there is some benefit to us if it gets cleaned up and corrected. But my understanding is we're not going to proceed with this until we know for sure that whatever we do is a benefit to what gets done on the other side of that project, because we don't want to be putting money out to then find out that whatever we did needs to be changed uh, to meet the needs of that project. Yeah, essentially MTI would have to approve, would have to give us their assurance that what is being done jointly would satisfy them that they agree to pay it. If they don't give us that assurance, then we wouldn't do it. Okay. I, I see that uh, that ditch along Athlone Street has been significantly scrubbed and cleaned out already. Is there more work to be done to, to widen it or anything like that? Yeah, that was, shall we say, not annual maintenance, but like ongoing maintenance, the scrubbing. Just, uh, and you'll see other ditches in that area that have been done, because uh, there was quite a bit of shrubs that have grown up, and then they trap sediment, and then the ditches fill in. Um, but yeah, this would include some additional ditching and stabilizing, like riprap, stuff like that. But essentially, it has to have MTI's stamp of approval so that they'll work on ditch road. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, continue. Um, I got one question there for Mr. Harvey. Okay. Um, uh, I don't know who's controlling the screen. Can you back it up just a little bit? Oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, it's in regards to uh, the, the, where we go, um, the 100 block Centennial Drive North Utility Renewal. Um, we have 50% or 150,000 borne by borrowing, and I'm just curious uh, 
uh, why we're borrowing for that when they're sufficient in the reserve. That was just a half and half and not to drain the reserve uh, too much, but potentially more could be taken out of the reserve if council wishes. Okay. Yeah, the, that, that block has been has been a significant issue for years. The like we, we, we do record the amount of water breaks in our in our uh, uh, supply system. Yeah, I've got no issue with it being okay. done. I, I, the issue is just of taking half of it out of reserve instead of, or half of it by borrowing versus paying it all by uh, reserve. Yep. That's all I got. Thank you. Okay. And we can still do that. Okay, carry on. We can, yes. I'll go back to my presentation here. I'm at, pretty sure I'm at the very end. Yes, that is debt obligations was my last slide. So that is the end of, of the public presentation. So these slides uh, will go out with the on the website on and Facebook if we want, just so we get the public to, to really review and, and ask questions regarding the 23 financial plan. Does uh, Mr. Danita have anything uh, to uh, discuss or? I uh, know the CAO covered everything in its presentation. Okay. <clears throat> and and uh, your worship, just for clarification, with that bumper one replacement, that was a max of nine hundred thousand. We know from the tender uh, that we signed off that it's significantly less than that. Correct. Right. Okay, Councillor Bobic, and then Councillor Boychuk. So, when the dust all settles, it's going to be a four point five percent increase if this budget is passed is that what I'm reading that's correct the mill rate yeah okay so with that can we have a breakdown of each department or what the increase on each department is like I'll go with transportation uh, governance uh, recreation what their percentage is up Yeah, I provided that to council a few years ago, the the long term or over a few years, the expenses and revenues of, of each department, that can be done again, yes. So I guess like the 4.5%, I'll call it a general average of the whole group, but I mean, I'd like to know which department is the biggest increase to the ratepayers. Would that be something that would be able to be put on that presentation for the public? Yep. Just going to. Oh, sorry, this doesn't have the, the percents. Okay. But you can get back. Yeah. yeah, I can get back. I thought I'd, I'd get it to you right away. Okay, no, thank you. <clears throat> Anybody else? Mr. Minish. Right. Turn the speech yeah, here? absolutely. On the, uh, on the expenditure for the pumper, how do you analyze that you need to replace the pumper? I think that uh, Deputy Mayor uh, Morio can explain that fairly well. Am I putting you on the hot seat when I do that? Yeah, probably. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, um, there's the NFP standard that indicates uh, the lifespan of uh, fire apparatus that's used uh, in the nation. And at each annual, uh, I guess, uh, period like 15 years and 30 years um, vehicles or apparatus can move from moves from one designation to the next so if it's new to one to are new to 15 years it's your first line uh, pumper uh, from 15 to uh, 30 years it can be used as a secondary pumper but not as your first line pumper and then after 30 years 
it goes to like a reserve status where it's not normally part of your inventory, but it can be used uh, for a, a backup uh, when one goes down for maintenance, oil change, and, and whatnot, or extra. But uh, to maintain your insurance ratings uh, to where we're at in the town, uh, you have to have a front line or your first main bumper under 15 years of age. And that's all basically due to the new industry standards, uh, the safety equipment that's on the trucks, and the technologies, all that with it. Uh, I took the liberty of phoning Chad from uh, Fort Geary Fire Trucks, what's a manufacturer in Winnipeg. He was not aware of this requirement, but he is aware of the fact that your pumper truck, all your pumper trucks are, should be checked on the pump itself. Every w one year is recommended, maximum two years, to ensure that the pumper trucks are acting as they're supposed to. This um, reference to what you call the NSP, NFPA. Yeah. Is, is, where does that come from, the federal government or the provincial government? Uh, that's uh, by neither government, it's by the National Fire Protection Agency. That's followed by um, all the firefighting agencies and associations. Okay, so do they have jurisdiction over this community? Um, well, that, that's the standards that the fire services follow and along with the insurance industry. Well, what this same gentleman told me is that he has a number of trucks in small communities such as ours that are 25 plus years old as a primary pumper. So if that was the case, and we're talking Canada now, how come that they can do it and we have to spend $900,000 or the you say is going to be less for something that hasn't been verified that we have to do this? And by right, the way, if you, 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 if you replace that. the pumper... Uh, but then the, the, the insurance ratings for what the community, that the insurance companies um, charge you for your fire insurance uh, would significantly go up um, because they give the towns uh, that they assess a rating on their fire protection um, based on the equipment and the, that the community has and the training and the availability of water and so on and so forth. Well, that's so specific, want, that uh, specific question on insurance rates I asked, and he said he has never heard of that before as long as your pumper is tested regularly. Uh, Mr. Okay. Mr. Poole, I don't want to get into debate, but... Uh, well, someone's got to prove that, that's all. No, that's fine. Go ahead, Mr. Poole. <clears throat> yeah, that's, that's what we get from the underwriters. Who the insurance companies basically follow is, is that... Uh, is that they will look at those. We know what's happening in neighbor, neighboring municipalities right now because they are using uh, uh, substandard, no, I don't want to say substandard, I guess I can, because it, it is based on best practice, so there's no required standard. We can use a 1952 fire department. We don't even have to have a truck if we don't want. But the, if you are going to follow it, uh, there are consequences for, for those decisions. And, and that is the underwriters come in and they will reevaluate uh, according to their criteria that directly affect the amount of insurance uh, our residents will pay. Okay, so, you, so hypothetically then if you decide to buy a new fire truck, will it fit in the fire, uh, fire department building? Sorry, you're gonna to have to repeat that. If you buy a new fire truck, will it fit into the building that you currently have? Yes. Yeah. So then everything moves down the line from your exist your rest of your your number one pumper now moves down to number two and so on. Is that the deal? Okay. That's correct. Right. Well, I challenge you on what you're saying, but you disagree with me, so I guess that's where we leave it. <laughs> but in terms of costs. Uh, what you just proposed this year, uh, you have a debt right now of $8 million, so Mr. Ganita says, and your debt ceiling is $16 million. You're adding over $1.3 uh, $1 million of debt to that current load. So you're going to be at nine point something million. Knowing your capital projects that you got on the board ahead of you, which you haven't even talked about tonight, you're budgeting for uh, a new um, sewage lagoon system that you're going to get some grant money, some federal government, or federal government money and provincial government money, but you're still going to have to fund this yourself. This should be part of this same plan of what's coming up in the near future because it's not just a way down the road. 
I, you correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Harvey, but I think it's already past due its lifetime expect, expectation. Is that correct? Yeah, it's getting to the Tired. end. <laughs> so this plan that you're putting together tonight is only part of it. There's a whole bunch more that's going to come into effect here probably before you can get to year end because you're spending money to see what you're going to have to spend going forward. And that's, that's what I can, can be concerned about in terms of a community citizen. Is your debt's going up four point some percent this year, but what's it going to do when the really mega projects hit? Eight to ten percent? And, and to give us a comparison of a $145,000 house is probably not the average house value in Swan River. I'm not talking about my house, I'm not talking about anybody else's house, but I'm thinking about the average house that we all live in. So that is the amount of money, and then you gave reference to, uh, I think, um, a few things that we would have as normal expenses throughout a month. That's not really relative to the average citizen in Swan River. And our population is getting older, and they're going to have less fixed, uh, they're all going to be an in fixed income. And we have some other issues we've got to deal with too. What do we do with our senior citizens? As I'm now one, you're one, there's a few others around the table here too, and where do they go? They have to leave Swan River because they can't get the care that they need here. This is all part of your picture and it ties into the pump. It ties into everything, every decision you make. I will tell you what my taxes are. They're $4,600 a year. I can afford that. But just take $4,600 out of the street every time you drive by a house. And that's how much you've got to contribute. That's how important we evaluate all these decisions that we're doing here. And I've been at this table, and I know we've had these discussions, and I'm not trying to tell you what to do, but I caution you is be careful that you don't, you're not making decisions that you don't have to make right now. Sometime you will. Because we're all paying for it one way or the other. Thank, Thank you for that. Any further comment? No, I don't need to comment anymore. <laughs> Thank you for listening. <laughs> we we'll appreciate it. All right. <clears throat> Go ahead. Uh, just, to, just to piggyback off of uh, Mr. Minish's comment, uh, I've sat in this room for, for many a debate on this fire truck, and uh, I've heard there are arguments from both sides, and I also recognize that the expenditure of this fire truck is also supported by the ratepayers of half a rural municipality right next door. Right. Yeah, so the, that's, I know you wanted to talk about that a little bit, but the, the, the amalgamation of the fire uh, services, I guess, between the two municipalities is something that's ongoing that will be part of that whole picture as far as the price tag and how much we're going to end up paying in the end. But it's, we're just kind of working on all that a little bit, so I don't want to get too far into that right now. But it will cost us less with this joint uh, uh, fire services. <clears throat> Go ahead. It may end up costing us less, but to piggyback, I think the message uh, Mr. Minish is also trying to get is we need to be cognizant of what we're borrowing money to do and whether or not we can afford that project. So is it a want or is it a need? And if achieving something and the only way to achieve it is by borrowing, then we absolutely need to be taking more consideration into is it a want or is it a need? And if it's not a need, then maybe we shouldn't be borrowing and maybe we should just be looking at is there something we need to do to keep this want in the community until we can fundraise and or put reserves aside to be able to pay without having to borrow. And that's something we need to be considering, not just for our term, but for future terms as well. Um, Mr. Mitch, before I let uh, go, uh, let uh, Mr. Poole speak, um, on the lagoon, um, we know that one of our municipal partners is having issues with their own lagoon too, and that might prompt them to have some action on theirs. And so I have been talking with the Reeve on that and the possibility of working on a, on a joint lagoon. So that's something <clears throat> that the provinces and the federal government have been saying for a very long time is that they want to see more regional projects. 
and, and working jointly on these types of huge uh, infrastructure projects. So that's something that we are working on as well, just to let you know. That's just a hint of an amalgamation. Of <laughs> I didn't say that. <clears throat> Mr. Poole. Yeah, I, I just wanted to agree with Councillor Medved. She's, she's right. You have to you, you have to look at your needs versus your wants, but to, you know, to, to what Mr. Minnis said, there, there's too much. You can't, you can't just line them all up and then say, oh, it looks like they, they all have to do it because we can't afford that. So the process that we've started is, is the strategic plan. And it's a way for council to make these tough decisions and, and get it done, get the actions done, and use those, use those arguments you use in that process to tell the public that, sorry, we're not going to be doing this, to tell administration, sorry, we're not going to support this, all of that. And, and along with that, using the, the, the resource management plan that the CFO and, and myself are, are planning to, to implement after the strategic plan shows you a, a real five to 10 year plan of what happens. So you can see it on paper of what happens if we say yes to everything. I, it, it's tough when you see it in pieces two or three times a year. But with that, I do believe this will help us make those long-term decisions. That's all I wanted to add. Go ahead. Um, I see the the uh, the listed cost of the sewage lagoon construction uh, is two point one million dollars. Is that the expected total cost of the project, or is that just the the municipal spending? That would be the municipal spending. Um, we are looking at a couple options there. There's a unit that we're using that we're in a trial period with to add oxygen to the water um, that can hopefully extend the life of the lagoon. Um, and then, yeah, this, we're doing a study on the lunar, we're doing an environmental approvals branch, uh, environmental approval process. Um, But what we were planning to do after the geotechnical, it looks like we're going to have to do something a little bit different. So those numbers will be updated once that study is completed. And we're hoping that uh, with this unit that we're trialing and that has been used in other places in Canada to increase the oxygen into the water, that we can increase the uh, lifespan of our lagoon. <coughs> they did that in the pond last year. They were in the rating the sewage system in the fall as of last year. Hmm. That's a very expensive project. They're using aeration? Yep. Yeah, this is a different unit. They're not? No, this is our, our the unit that we're doing is, is considerably different and way more affordable and, and newer. Um, projected, uh, if it comes to the numbers, it's, it's going to improve the lagoon by... 25%, it'll reduce the sludge in the lagoon by 25%. You're increasing, I believe it is the anaerobic, anaerobic, the aerobic, aerobic, aerobic uh, bacteria in there. So then that will decrease the sludge. So treatment over a four year plant, four year term could potentially have our lagoon back up to very minimal sludge. And uh, I was referring to the capital cost of it. Capital at, at rate as of right now, it hasn't cost us anything. It's actually saved us money. Because it's a trial, sort of. No, but if you go full more, you, you guys are really... um, This one will be around twenty eight thousand a year. Okay. And saves us what in the sulfate or sulfuric or ferrous whatever. Yeah, once we once we complete the trial period, we'll have better ideas on the number, uh, but it should save costs that we're currently putting in chemicals to lower the phosphate. So that'll help to offset the 20,000 a year. And also much more environmentally friendly than throwing that stuff in the lagoon. Yeah. Okay, <coughs> any further discussion? No. Just no, maybe, I didn't you ask you to but uh, state your name and your uh, uh, civic address just for the record. He did. He did at the start. Yeah, nine. Nine. No, no, no. no. Oh. Jeremy. Uh, Jeremy Bergen, uh, reporter, Swan Valley Star and Times, Civic Address, 415 River Road, Swan Valley West. Go ahead. Okay, so a couple from my notes here. Um, 
One thing I noted, according to my calculation, you, 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 you noted in your presentation that there's a 4.5% increase in taxes, but according to my calculation on my sheet, it's actually like not even half a percent. So am I do, doing my arithmetic wrong or, or? It's the mill rate. Yeah, it'll be the mill rate. So it's a 4.5% increase on your, on your mill rate. So you're, if you want to, if you want to see what it is, uh, I, I didn't see the mill rate numbers. So in how you calculate that, you take your portioned assessment. So which is for residential, uh, 0.45 times your total assessment is your portioned assessment. And you times that by the mill rate and divide by a thousand. That is the cost that you will pay in tax. So that mill rate number is what increased. So it will be different from property to property, but uh, a way a way to state to the public, a way the town can say everybody's taxes are going up by we have to use the mill rate because that's the constant calculation. Right. Did you understand that? Uh, yeah. I think so. Uh, so the cool. half a percent increase on the total tax levy. That's that's a sustainable amount, Mr. Benita. Do you want to chime in here, or uh, the four point five percent increase is just on municipal taxes, not the total tax taxes. The total taxes includes school taxes, which are going down because the province is phasing out uh, raising money for education through property taxation. So. When when uh, CAO presented a 4.5 percent increase, that's just on the municipal taxes only. Right. Okay. Yeah. Understood. What about your other question? Does that you had a question there that you were asking, or did that answer? Yeah, no, I had, yeah that answers that one. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> on the just a question on the uh, the landfill and how that how the expenses there are calculated. Because that facility is co-owned with your, your next door neighbor, um, am I correct in understanding that every piece of garbage that's collected in this town goes over that scale and is charged according to the same rate? Yeah. Yeah, that's so that it's fair, so that, because it's done by weight, so then our residents, whatever waste they generate, pay the same as residents in Swan Valley West. So it's, it's the way to be fair due to the partnership. Okay. Answer that. Um, and then, regarding the library uh, budget and amount, is that just kind of rough guesswork at this point? Because if I understand correctly, they haven't presented a budget yet? Well, that's what we're budgeting for, so it, it, it needs to be that, that number. At least from my point of view, anyway. Okay. I think that's all I have then. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Anything further? If not, oh, where are we here? Result of the public hearing for the 2023 financial plan be closed at 8:38 p.m. Be it further resolved, the May 2nd regular meeting council <coughs> now can resume. Thanks. Uh, moved by Councillor Bovic, seconded by Councillor Boychuk. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Now let's go back to 10.2. And we left off with um, Councillor Medwood with some questions on the financial uh, statements for March. Um, Yes. Okay. So, <coughs> page five. Yeah. Okay. I'm just making sure. Okay. Under the transportation services, we list unallocated wages and benefits. It's in the negative, 343.2%. Can we, that in the line right underneath it, on a, unallocated equipment costs also sitting in a negative 
I believe is what those brackets represent. So if we, if I can have it explain one, what those two lines are for, and two, why they're sitting in a negative? Because those haven't been allocated yet because they're allocated based on the pay sheets that the guys bring, or the time sheets that the guys bring in. Uh, so like it's budgeted, but it hasn't been actually allocated yet. So using, using snow removal for, for an example, <clears throat> we have a, a, a laborer who is, who is working on snow removal in town. So he, he has six hours of that day, uh, or whatever time he has, gets charged to our snow removal account. And so two hours, he's, he's working on the grader or something, but, uh, or something that cannot be allocated to another account, but is directly related to snow removal, that, that would be an unallocated cost to the town of Swan River. Six are allocated to directly the snow removal account. Two of them would be an unallocated cost uh, to snow removal. Is that, is that correct, Steve Bolganita? Uh, yeah, so all, all the public works wages are coded in one account and then they're based on their time sheets, they're allocated out to various departments. And so the difference between what they're actually paid and what got allocated out is the unallocated. Same for equipment. Uh, all the costs of the equipment are coded in a central place and then they're allocated out. And so the difference between what the actual costs were and what got allocated out is what's left in unallocated. Okay, so they're showing just so I can make sure I've wrapped my head around this and what you're saying, they're showing us a negative because they haven't been allocated yet. In the percentage column. Uh, in the actual column, if it's negative, it means more has been allocated out than what than what the costs have been in, incurred so far. So that means we've overspent in that area or we haven't hit our mark yet? What's been charged out at our charge out rates is more than what the costs of the employees wages have been so far. Okay, so then there's room to allocate more. I think I understand that. Um, if not, I'll ask probably the next report. Uh, storm sewers uh, shows 38.2% and snow and ice removal at 51.5%. They're both kind of above 25%. Is this typical for this time of year? Yeah, so storm sewers, a lot of that is thawing everything out. Yeah. Uh, so a large portion of that gets used up by this time of year or around this time of year and then uh, the snow and ice removal so we've had January February March April of snow and then we're out of snow and then we kind of get back into it October November December kind of thing yeah so we're kind of on target for what we would normally see at this time of year on target with the understanding that the snow and ice removal one is probably the most volatile of, of all, all of them. them. Uh, same page further down, uh, environmental cleanup. What is that about and for? It's under environmental health services. The last one. Uh, yeah, I'd have to check what that specific one was. That's a, I'd have to pull up that invoice and see what that was for. Because if I don't have my column titles here, but I believe there was nothing budgeted, but there was an actual. Yeah, I'll have to pull it in okay. on that one to see. It, was it could on. it could have been assist just for an example. I'm not saying it was, but just for an example, uh, some public works labor and equipment going to to assist a contractor for contaminated soil. Yeah, I'll. But I'll Darren, Darren will follow up. Okay, thank you. Uh, moving on to page six. Um, under the Resource Conservation and Industrial Development Services, 
Uh, the Swan Valley Veterinary Services Board, um, we had an email sent out earlier, um, 8,000 is what we budget, but that's not this, because I think our amount went up, did it not? Yeah, um, Mr. I think Dineta, it reflected 9,000 and something. I the hand up, but it may need to do with something else, but the actual amount that was, uh, was levied, or proposed to be levied, uh, is a different amount. But just an answer to the environmental cleanup that was for Gardaline shipping to Miller Environmental. So the director Harvey can explain that more. Yeah, I'll have to look into that one if that okay. was. Okay. Because I was going to say that doesn't necessarily clear that up for me. But uh, the vet uh, board has not met yet to. Uh, uh, approve its budget so the eight thousand that's there was uh, high because the formula is based on uh, statistics and we didn't know uh, how the statistics would play out so we budgeted high for it, it the statistics worked out to less than that but and the, and the vet clinic uh, or the vet board is planning on meeting on Monday. We can lower these, these numbers too, as we move along. Well, I know we can lower them. I was, I didn't have time to pull that email up, but I... I have it right here, 7,204.50. Yeah. Oh, okay, so we were the one that was under? Because I was like, I swear there was one that was slightly over... Municipality Swan Valley West was 9,000. Okay, there we go. Yeah, we're saying you. I thought we were that one. No. Nope. Um, the other one I have here is incentive plan, town promotion, and tourism. Where exactly does that money go to? Like, is it the town itself that's doing these things? and Or is this money budgeted going to another are entity. You, what are you are you asking on the incentive plan or what you, on which one? All three incentive plan, town promotion and tourism. So right. those are those are three different questions. Yes and at the same time no. What I want to know is is the town actually managing those entities and fulfilling those obligations or is this money we've put aside for these three areas but we actually give that money to mm -hmm. say rise or the incentive, no, the, the incentive plan is, is different go ahead yeah the, the incentive plan is a policy the council passed with ins with specific instructions so that that's just that is based on an average of, of, of just historic amounts that we've paid uh people in lieu of the taxes that they don't pay because of the incentive plan so and it changes whether they're how much they're spending and whether it's residential. So there's stages in residential development, stages in commercial development, stages in industrial developments. But if they apply for it, we in some cases give 100% of the taxes back on what they build <clears throat> the first year, 50% the second year. Some of it's 75. It changes through it, so we can provide that that policy to council so that they understand the incentive policy. The forty thousand dollars is just an estimate of what might be applied for. So we, we are going to give it to them because it is a policy, and we should have enough money in there to account for when it happens. Okay, and for the other two, the tourism is explained in the presentation. Eight thousand dollars for the chamber of commerce. Uh, and then there was Valley in the Mountains and uh, uh, Parkland Tourism. So those are ads in magazines. Uh, yeah, so it's really advertising. And then things like the Chamber of Commerce asking us to, to raise some flags. Public Works has to account that to a, an account. It can't go to snow removal or anything. That's where something like that okay thank you yeah uh, moving on to page seven uh, under the expenses administration administrative sorry uh, is showing we're already at 71.6 percent 
That seems a little high when we're only 25% into the year. Mr. Ganita. I'm just trying to find what you're looking at. Is that like our trips for like the AMM meetings and stuff like that? The expenses associated with that? It's uh, page seven, Swan River Centennial Arena. And then uh, there's revenue and then expenses and then administrative. So you're looking you're looking at the uh, the expenses for the Centennial Arena. Yeah, that's right. the page it's on, page okay. 7. Then under the expense column, it says administrative. We've budgeted $12,900. We apparently already spent $9,238.89, which is 71.6% of the budget, and we're only 25% into the year. So I'm just wondering if this is typical, or is this something that should be a red flag that we should be concerned about? CFO Ganita, do you see that? And my detail is not responding, so I yeah, it it look, it looks like we're uh, over budget on uh, office supplies and advertising. I guess there's advertising for the new rec director. And how do we correct that to get us back on track and stay within the budget? That would be up to the new rec director once he gets here and myself telling him where we're going to not spend money to make that back. Okay. Uh, maybe keep council posted on that plan. Uh, next line is the Zamboni, 48.5%. Uh, Are we kind of on target? I realize this is a seasonal facility, but are we kind of on target there at 45.8? I would say because you're half the season in, mm -hmm. basically, and half will come at the end of the year. That's say. correct. The Zamboni's put away, so it'll be brought back out in September. Okay. And uh, vehicle, we're at 60.7%, which is well, above 50% of the budget, so... Well, the auto tax has been paid in full already. It was due at the end of February. So. Ah, that's it. We, we, I think we had that question once before, mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. And parking lot, we're at 60.8%. Is that parking lot to do a snow removal clearing? That's correct. In general maintenance, there's very little maintenance that goes into that parking lot in the summer. So that'll be the rest of that will be expended. Okay. We, we are over 50%. So is that typical for this time of year or do we have to be mindful come winter? We, we absolutely need to be mindful come winter. Okay. We'll maybe make a note. Yeah. And, and just some of the smaller items, like that one's $800. Uh, so then the percentages, like if you spend $100 over it's substantial percentage um, so that's one thing to keep in mind when you're looking at the percentages like you know being a higher percentage on one say like we benefits of 213,000 uh, versus one you know like canteens $250 so those are kind of the important ones to watch is the big ticket item ones too it's a higher percentage because the smaller number ones like paying off uh, uh, MPI or whatever that can make it jump a large amount. I understand all of that at the same time I also understand we have a budget and we have certain dollars and certain cents so if it's going to put the whole budget over then it's something we need to be concerned about. Yeah. Uh, moving on to page 8 uh, under the expenses column 
uh, repairs and maintenance. And sorry, I blew past which facility this one is. Uh, this will be the pool, the aquatic center. Uh, we're at 53.9% of our budget. Uh, I know we've seen a few maintenance and repairs things coming past the council table. Are we expecting this to be on track? Are we anticipating going over? Because we're already over halfway into the budget. This particular facility is year-round. Who's answering that? The last I uh, was reported from the previous rec director is they did have plans for for a lot of repairs. I know that uh, a major one has happened. The Dectron unit was repaired. A hot water tank did blow. So there's, there's things like that that you know they're just going to happen, and we have to. Go. But that's the that's the administrator's job. To recognize when that happens at which time of the year and in, if it happens december 18th he's going to have to inform me and council uh if we're going to go over if it's in september there's usually some some options or tools that we can use in order to uh, stay under budget <clears throat> okay if we can keep an eye on that one and also when expenses are coming through if we can also maybe let council know where we're at with regards to the budget at the same time just so we have that when we need to make a decision especially if they're um, big ticket items or price tags please and thank we, you yeah yeah we usually provide around uh the end of august through september uh council with a where are we in the budget and you know we've done things as 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 much as uh, stopping all overtime, obviously outside of snow removal and emergencies, but things things like that can be done. Perfect, thank you, Mr. Ganeda. And just going back to the arena administration, we also spent just under two thousand dollars for annual inspection. And last year it was done in July. This year it was done much earlier. So that's. That explains uh, some of that, uh, half of the budget being spent already. Thank you, CFO Ganita. Councilor Boychuk. I'm wondering if we could do this kind of in, a, in, in the Excel spreadsheet where those detail pop-up comment boxes can be and then when we have those things, that information's there for all of us to, to look at. Is that possible to add those comment fields? We, we have, but we'll, we'll get into the role of council. So we will, we've okay. done this in the past when we go line by line, uh, it will end up, you know, you guys won't need as many administrators if you guys really want to get to the details of how much we're going to plow, how much we're going to do this. Council's role is to, to provide the service and, and we, you know, we, we're, we're trying to, to, to let council know that when we say our, you know our, our budgets are going up there's no indication of dropping services we we're not talking about just dropping boulevard sweeping or or not putting up these 10 flags instead of 50 real services that will drop hundreds of thousands of dollars off of our budget as opposed to uh 10 000 here 800 there 500 here we we've had budget processes when we did that uh go as long as three months and you know we're knocking 50 bucks off of a 500 dollars budget we're knocking 500 off of a thousand and council would you know check off oh i got 2500 off the budget tonight and we do that several <coughs> times ultimately that is up to council you guys get to decide how you want to run the municipality but uh if you get the Excel sheet with every single line, and we do this line by line, uh, I guess the warning is, is if we're, if we're going to do that, how much are we going to really use the strategic plan? So your, your, your administration will not believe you that you really want to use the strategic plan if you're going to do line by line. We can if council's wishes. I don't think that's a good idea, but um, 
are all are your questions right now are they primarily all similar to the the in the bracket of uh, fifty percent or sixty percent? Is that where most of your questions are? Well, yes. Okay, because we we've heard several of them, but I'm, and I we have seventeen pages, and we've been talking about this for some time. I I could maybe recommend that if you have more of them, or if there's not many more, whatever, go through them, but. Um, if, if you have several, I would maybe encourage you maybe to email um, uh, Mr. Ganita or come in and see Mr. Ganita to be able to go through those with him and for him to um, explain. Because so far I think that it has been explained that there are some that, you know, they, they look a little wonky, but is there, there's explanations for it, either whether moving uh, monies or, or if they have... Um, allocations or, or so forth or seasonal charges where they're higher in the winter and less in the summer and more in the fall and, and we'll see those fluctuations as as the year goes on that I understand and as a new counselor in order to do my due dil diligence this is my opportunity to learn as well as the public's to learn where we're at and whether we're on target with our budget some things are seasonal so yeah a higher percentage but i'd also like to know that my mind is on the right path and that i'm just not jumping to conclusions that i don't have supporting information for okay carry on a uh, vehicle for what page are you on still the same page what was next that? line over eight uh on page eight uh, the vehicle at 76.8%, that's I'm assuming like the other one, the auto pack's been paid. Correct. So this is typical for this time of year? Yeah. Um, Unless we pay the auto pack later. Okay, uh, page nine under expenses. Uh, this would be for the general operating revenue and expenses. Uh, advertising and publications, 81.7%. And then the line right below it, uh, license memberships and fees at 128.1%. Yeah, the advertising is uh, the, for the director of recreation it's split between arena pool and parks and i i expand, i expanded that advertisement to saskatchewan it's it's not like typical advertisements it's, it's really just for the star at times and the radio we did not anticipate that the uh change out in that administrator so the advertisements will go over budget do we have just a general advertising budget overall for the town we we do not account like that so everything is accounted for separately per its department or even for its facility uh i'm gonna let's see if we can even expand on that uh, yes uh, some of the services are part of the purchase services agreements with other municipalities so we want to make sure that we allocate all the costs to the, each uh, different area. And so other municipalities uh, pay towards a portion of the parks costs and a portion of the arena costs, a portion of the pool costs. So we're careful to allocate everything where to the respective facilities. I do understand that and I, I respect that. But what I'm wondering is, do we have an overall, like if you just look at a overall overview of the budget, do we have a budget for advertising for the town? I know it'll get not, divvied up. Not one, just that they're all divided. There isn't one lump sum one. That's, they're, they're all, all for each of the departments. Is there a way of doing kind of a big picture one because I'm just wondering if we can be looking to, and I've mentioned this before, uh, 
an annual contract with the Star and Times in particular uh, for in particular a local be it the public hearing notices the public on notice that town strip and whatnot but roll it all into one do an annual contract for advertising see if we can't bring some of those Costs I think, I think down we can. Here. I think we can do that, or we can look at that. But we need to stick to the, the, the questions to the resolution. Okay. All right. Uh, next line: license membership fees. We're over on that. Does our budget account for it? Uh, I'll look into that when it's uh, mostly the when to work subscription, which should be split uh, between the different facilities. It looks like it may have been all coded to parks. Thank I'll, you. I'll look, I'll look at it and I'll split it where it needs to be. And um, insurance and auto pack. What is this pertaining to if we've already had vehicles come up that Apparently, they're exceeding their percentage for auto pack reasons. Well, there there are vehicles used uh, for arena purposes, for pool purposes, and this is for parks purposes. Okay. Uh, and, and likewise, the insurance uh, has all been paid because it's. It goes from uh, April 1 to April 1, so that insurance for the whole year has been paid as well. Okay. Uh, equipment usage recovery, what exactly is that about? Again, that's uh, uh, allocating out the costs of parks equipment that's used elsewhere, like parks will do work in other parts of town where, where needed. Like boulevards and sometimes they even mow at the airport where wherever it's needed they'll work and so it's allocated a charge a, a town's charge out rates. Okay, thank you. Uh, rotary trails? That's at Rotary Park. Correct. And is that the bulk of its expenses come with spring cleanup or something, or? Because we're at 69.1% of that budget. I believe they cleared out in the week or two. So it hasn't been done yet? No, I believe they do clear it out in the winter. Oh, as in uh, snow, snow, snow removal. removal. Okay, thank you. Uh, Page 10, the expenses column janitorial, we're at 52.5% with a year round facility. Is this typical? Sorry, which one was that? On page 10 under expenses, janitorial. So it's for the Veterans Community Hall. We're at 52.5%. Uh, yeah, we'll have to, I know there, there's, there's heavy use in the, and then I have to take a look at the use numbers to explain, to be able to explain, uh, uh, that, but I'll, I'll have to get back to you on that. Thank you. And then the utilities and telephone. Um, what all are we paying utilities on? Is that just water? Is there internet no, that, or anything included in that? Yes, there'd be any 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 utility that, that the facility uses. What they are, I'd have to get back to you on that as well. Okay. And I think that might be the last one. Just let me 
And if I, if I, if I can, I know what I said previously might seem harsh, but I get, I, get, I want council to know that I hear what you're saying. I know I, I do hear council saying they needed more information. So we have our, our manager meetings and we discuss more detailed reports. The rec director will have detailed reports uh, coming up. We're trying to find ways to give you more information about what we do because I, I do see it. I do see that sometimes it seems like you guys are in the dark and I understand. But uh, yeah, I just I didn't I just wanted to qualify that what I said earlier. Well, thank you, because I'll admit, I do feel like I'm in the dark, and that's a lot to do with being a new counselor, and this is all new. <laughs> so. Mr. Benita? The, the utilities for the hall the, the, include electricity, and so electricity is a lot higher in the winter <coughs> months, but that'll go down in the summer. Thank you. Um, if we jump to page 14, Utility operating fund revenue and expenses. The fourth line down, the discounts, refunds, and cancellations. What exact is that like when we're doing uh, refunds for like water utility when people move and things like that? Or what exactly does that pertain to? That's uh, mostly the leak uh, adjustments. If someone that, that council passed a policy that allows uh, for people to apply for some relief um, on a one-time basis if they have a water leak. So that's what, no, that would be a water leak of a credit. Okay. And sewage collection system further down under sewer services? That was due to the flushing, the flushing program. Uh, so we did that in the spring. Okay. Oh, wait, I just saw. For our handy transit, which is page 16, the van insurance and license were showing. 295.4% over budget. Um, have we accounted for that overage in our 2023 budget? It looks like it's an overage of almost $2,000. I guess in the past, in the past couple of years, we've gotten a hefty COVID rebate, so maybe that budget is uh, too low, basing on past couple of years, because we may not get a COVID rebate now on the auto pack. Okay, so that's something we need to be looking at to one make sure we have either some reserves to cover it and maybe for future years make sure we're budgeting uh, I guess accordingly. And the other line is the audit that I'm guessing that was a financial audit, the annual thing we just went through the other a few council meetings back. Correct. Okay. Thank you. That was the last of it. Councilor Malvick, did you have something? Uh, yes. Uh, I'm going to leave it to page 11. There's, am I right in saying there's 135,000 in reserve fund for a fire truck? Or fire department, I should say, not that. Page 11? Yeah. <coughs> That's correct. Mm -hmm. And we're putting in another 45,000? Uh, I believe that's what the budget had, yes. So would we not use that money instead of borrowing the whole works for that truck instead of borrowing the whole works? Well, my suggestion and I was going to bring forward is that when the, we get the invoice or for that uh, additional equipment that was extra, is that we take it out of reserve instead of just putting on borrowing. And again, that's an option. 
Okay. Okay. Thank you. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 10.3. Whereas subsections 306.1 of the Municipal Act provides that a municipality may cancel or reduce taxes upon receipt of assessment alterations for the management of assessment services. Therefore, be it resolved that the assessment alteration made by the Manitoba Assessment Services on April the 21st for the 2022 tax year be made to the 2023 property tax roll with the resulting decrease being $22.83. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor Boychuk. Discussion? Go ahead. Just one question. Um, this is just something that gets either added to or reduced from the property tax bill? Okay. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 11.1. Result of bylaw 4, 2023, being a bylaw of the town of Swan River, setting the rate of taxes for 2023 be read first time. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor Boychuk. Discussion? Go ahead. I have a couple questions. Just let me pull that up. On page one, about halfway down, and whereas the assessed value of the rateable business properties within the town of Swan River according to the latest business assessment rule. Uh, the business fees of 6188 What exactly is that? Where, where, where are you? About halfway down. It's the one, two, three, well... It's the sec third whereas. Oh. No, you're not. I thought you were. I was going to say right, it's... Back. To be above the now, therefore. That's the cable television. Oh, that cable TV one you answered earlier for me? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Oh, that. Okay, I thought you were talking about the budget. <clears throat> and then there was, uh, well, it's page three, item R, item S. And also, I think it moves on to page four, item Y. There are three debentures for the Richardson Recreation and Wellness Center. So R is a special mill rate of 1.094. Uh, S is a special per parcel rate of 59.73 as per schedule C, which I don't see here, and Y was uh, a special mill rate of 0 0.338 mills. What are the three different debentures on the Richardson Wellness Center? Mr. Gleed, I'll let you explain that because it's uh, there was three different ways that we did that. So uh, there was the wellness center construction uh, back in 2013, 2014, and council decided to have it be the boring paid for in two parts. One was a frontage or a per parcel amount, every household every property paid $59.73 a year for the life of the debenture and then the rest of the debenture payment is on mill rate so that's why there's two needed for that and then the, the, the third one is for the repairs the town borrowed to repair do some forget it but it's $600,000 worth of repairs at the pool. So two are for the original construction, a per parcel rate and a mill rate, and then the third one is for the repairs. Okay, thank you. Okay, 
further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. I'm looking at that. Oh, sorry. I didn't see that. No problem. Uh, let me ask the question again so I make it right. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Opposed? Abstain? Sorry, I, <laughs> what question are we? Just, because uh, Councillor Bobbick, I didn't ask the question about opposed because I thought I'd see his hand go up. So I was asking the question again on the resolution. Oh, for accepting the bylaw for the first reading? That's right. Okay. So it's carried. <laughs> Terry, I Terry? No, sorry, CFO Ganita. I have to apologize. There doesn't seem to be a resolution to approve the financial plan, and, and this uh, bylaw says whereas a financial plan has been approved, so we, we definitely need to have a resolution to approve the financial plan. That's true. <clears throat> I will add, I will add it under notice of motion. <clears throat> okay. We do need a financial plan. Okay. Just Wait, tell me what you me. have it there. I actually missed that. Good catch, uh, Mr. Gudia. Is there a final number? And that number is. What do you ask? What if got all the bill rates, but it really goes somewhere I'd like to see, and that adds up to an increase in taxes of 0.25%. That's your budget. It was there? Yeah, it's in the first part. It's not the same as a tax increase total, is it? It's a, it's a percent of the mill, yeah. should, but there should be a tax total number, which is the same as the mill, 0.45 mills. That's the it's, not, it's not the same. Like, it yeah. should be 12.1 on your agenda. Okay. 12.1, result of the 2023 financial plan. There's a spelling error in there, just so you know. Uh, of the town of Swan River be accepted and approved. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Medwood. Discussion? Mr. Kanita? Well, I, I was in the process of pulling up the resolution from the previous year. It's it's much longer. Okay. I think we need the extra details, so just bear with me. Okay, fair you, you can. You can email me, Terry. He could probably get on there. Yeah, he can switch it up. should be there now. Yeah, thank you. Whereas sections 162.1 of the Municipal Act requires that uh, every council must adopt a financial plan uh, for each fiscal year in the form approved by the Minister consisting of an operating budget, capital budget, an estimate of operating revenue and expenses, expenditures for the following fiscal year and a five-year capital expenditure program. And whereas sections 162.2 of the Municipal Act requires that before adopting the financial plan, the council must give notice and hold a hearing 
and in respect of the plan. And whereas a public hearing has been held, therefore be it resolved that the financial plan for 2023 fiscal year consisting of an operating budget, capital budget, an estimate of operating revenue and, ex and expenditures for the following fiscal year and a five-year capital expenditure program be hereby approved. That was moved by the Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Medwood. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Resolve this regular meeting of council now be adjourned at 9.25 p.m. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion? All in favor? I must stay a little longer. We're adjourned.